We've well, we haven't done it, but we are live. Yeah, we are. Hell yeah. Um, Evidently, the uh, the person who's mad at me right now is you accused my friend of being a troll. Your assertion was unfounded. You're guilty of that which you accuse other of. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, fuck off. <laughs> uh, I'd love to stay on Twitter and argue with you, but we're about to hit 100,000 subscribers. So, you know, bite me, dumbass. Check this out. Check this. As we went live, somebody was like, well, I want to make it take longer because we were waiting until we were five away. You're probably going to have to reframe yourself a little, or I can shrink that. Oh, there we go. We've got a live, uh, we got a live count going. I'm going to shrink that a little bit, make it a little easier on us. Uh, that I may or may not leave up because I know people like to play games with it. But here we are now two hours early. And Matt, I was wondering if you... Uh, time became irrelevant during the uh, pandemic for a lot of people. Definitely for me. And so uh, I wonder if you have a good estimate, guesstimate, on uh, how long ago the Hangups first episode was. So let's see. This is... So it was. Ooh, that's going to be hard because I think it was before the 2020 election. I knew this was going to happen. Oh, there's people unsubscribing. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. all right. I just put some people off on Twitter. Um, I think it's. I think we started before the 2020 election. Yes, we did start before the 2020 election, but. Here's the, I guess, the little hint. Not by a lot. Yeah, not by a lot. So I think it was, wasn't it like June or July of 20? It was September 16th, 2020. And on that day, we had 29,083 subscribers. Wow. And now, here we are three years later, a mere 10 away with some people unsubscribing just to see the number move. And then some will put back after it hits 100 and then some won't. It's just a silly thing people do. Uh, I, 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 this is actually uh, both Matt and I's second time, uh, and I've done third. it with a live thing before as well. Oh, it's, this is your third 100,000 channel? My personal channel's got 180,000. The Atheist Experience has 300 mm. and some odd thousand. Um, and so this will be the third channel that I've been a primary feature on that will have crossed 100,000, assuming it gets there. I just... I just really made somebody angry by uh, pointing out that their friend is a shithead, uh, <laughs> making assertions that they don't back up. I'm uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see it. We are getting the rest of the show. So this show would usually begin about two hours later. We decided that. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh shit. We decided that if we're probably going to see the moment a few times tonight. I I guarantee you when it hits a hundred, <laughs> we're going to lose some as well. So we're going to get to relive it. Oh, down to ninety eight. Here we go. Uh, yeah, uh, we're just fucking with us. Yeah, yeah. It's I, it, on the one hand, I want to put it away so people stop fucking with us, but on the other hand, I don't want to. There we go. Oh, Yay. for the first time ever, the line has a hundred thousand simultaneous subscribers. We have actually gotten many more than a hundred thousand subscribers, and we're back to ninety. That's all right. It can go back down again now. We crossed the threshold. Ah, we did it. I hit the, yeah, yeah, we hit the mark. Matt, huge part of that. Uh, um, I'll send you the graph after so you can see the little, the little thing, the little uh, pop-up. Basically, there's a pretty direct correlation between, let me turn the um, brightness up on my, the, I'm literally just streaming the screen of my iPad right now. That's actually what's holding this thing. There's a pretty uh, high correlation between the beginning of the hangup uh, where we were at 29,000 until we got to about, I'd say about 55,000. And then our growth sort of became consistent again. We stopped having as big as spikes. And then uh, we started doing all the stuff with uh, basically starting around fall of last year, where we started to expand even more. And that's where we saw the, uh, the jump up. Uh, and now here we are. Safely over a hundred thousand, enough so that unless people organized, there's not a lot of chance of uh, it going under. But maybe they will. Maybe that was silly of me to say. Uh, by the way, we will still do super chats and everything today. Um, let's do a hundred thousand dollars in super chats. That's the no. I'm just kidding. That's <laughs> that would be an amazing. Uh, that would be li awesome. Line con would for sure be happening and getting 
upgrade. <laughs> we we are pretty sure it's happening, but uh, it would be getting a big old upgrade. I'm supposed to have, by the way, I'll, I'll just tell Matt now, the venue uh, is supposed to send me the proposed contract, which then we'll have a meeting with everybody at the line uh, about, and we'll, we'll make a final decision on uh, LineCon 2024, April 7th and April, April 7th and 8th, which is the day before and the day of the total solar eclipse near Austin, Texas. Um, hey, uh, my ass is dragging. Um, once you call in real quick, yeah, is, is my ass is dragging. Just said in chat, you're scheduled to quote debate Howard George Stirrup. Do you know who he is? I have no fucking clue. What research have you done on the circus performer? I do no research on my debate opponents. I don't give a shit who my debate opponents are. I care what the topic is. However, I almost canceled this debate twice because this debate has been, uh, it's funny that you call him a circus performer because it's been a circus so far. And just today, he tried to change the argument that he's making. He, he presented, he wanted three, uh, somebody says a bigger idiot than perfect dog. Well, I don't want to poison the well too much, but he, <laughs> he had three points that he was trying to argue for. And turns out he had presented 10 and James just picked three. But the, here, I don't want to do a debate review before the debate, but fuck it, here we go. Yeah, Here's what's it. supposed to be happening this weekend. Uh, this guy who I've never heard of wanted to debate whether or not there's good evidence for God, and his three points are supposed to be, one, design of the earth for life, two, evidence of Noah's Ark, and three, historical and actual evidence of a devil. Now, all I cared about was the third one. That's I wanted to finally sit down and be able to do, wow, let's have a debate about, first of all, how stupid is the, the historical and actual evidence of a devil, which is an admission that historical evidence isn't actual evidence right there in his proposed point. But uh, today he said he wanted to, to, to drop the third one, which is the only one I actually gave a shit about. Ha, of course. Uh, and, and not do historical and actual evidence for the devil and add a different point, which was actually the same as his first point again. And the, the different point was um, the earth has a special place in the universe for life. So now, instead of debating whether or not there's actual evidence for the devil, it's supposed to be design of the earth for life, evidence of Noah's Ark, historical and actual evidence. Oops, no, we're not doing that. The third one is going to be the earth has a special place in the universe for life. Now, uh, not to, you know, screw up the debate by giving everybody a preview ahead of time. None of those things, even if they were all true, are evidence that a God exists. Sorry, they're just not. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, so people are playing with the number again. We'll leave it up. I don't care. Like I said, we hit it already. I'm going to bring this up just because it was so generous and so cool and so sweet. Uh, we do have from KB in $100 for 100K. Well, $99.99 for 100K. Oh, good, Mike. Alexa, stop. Uh, uh, well, $99.99 for 100K. Love this channel. Go Jimmy yourself, Jimmy. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, KB. And that is, that is so generous, so sweet of you to do. Uh, and as always, we will do at, throughout the show, but primarily at the end, any uh, super chat of anything, $10 or more. Um, while we're here, I kind of want to talk about being at 100K and the future and the channel and uh, what we're currently working on and the the uh, state of things and the state of, uh, uh, well, yeah, the state of things. Is there anything you'd like Just to note on? For clarity, I want you to start talking about all that stuff. Yeah. But I want to make sure that we're all on the same page as to what's happening right now. It's four o'clock. Mm -hmm. The hang up was supposed to start in two hours mm -hmm. and usually run till nine or whatever. I'm assuming that despite the fact that we haven't done prep work, you and I are going to fly by the seat of our pants and we're just going to start talking about stuff. And that will eventually turn into a version of the hang up almost right away. And we'll just run yeah. until we're done, whether it's seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, whatever. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, honestly, okay. well, I've got lines open, but I'm still waiting for a, a call screener to connect because it was last minute to them as well. So uh, uh, that will uh, uh, be something. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get things going. Um, yeah, I do want to talk about that. And then we'll, we also, Matt and I also have both 
political hangups this week that we, we definitely want to get to, uh, that boy, I got a lot. I think Matt's got a lot. Uh, but before that, a little, a little briefing, I suppose, on, uh, what the plan is for the future. And I'll start off with what might be the saddest news, except for most people, because we get a lot of comments who are like, I wish Jimmy would go away. Well, guess what? It's happened. No, I'm not quite. Uh, but let me tell you all this. <clears throat> This is beginning, I, I would say this moment is the beginning of something I've been talking about for a long time, and that is that I am actually going to start phasing myself out. As a person who is the front of, I, I hired, we're up to I think 10 hosts, and I, I want to say that I have hired 10 people who I, want, I completely believe are better at this than I am, but I have confidence in and I love and, and, and are fantastic people. And now we're getting to a point I've said this to, uh, over time and people are aware and my friends are very aware. I hate being a public figure. I do, which ironically, before I go, I'm going to become much more of one. I'm going to be much more present and then I'm going to go. Uh, I, over the next year, you're going to see me host the Sunday show less. Uh, it won't be, well, it's going to start pretty soon actually. Uh, however, I will be now starting a new show over on what was my main channel is now an extension of the line. Uh, called the sometime show. It is a return of something. And at present, the plan is for that to go for about a year and then a little bit more to get to inauguration of whoever's going to end up being the winner. Because I have a feeling no matter who wins, there will be a lot to talk about from election day to the inauguration. So it's actually starting, the sometime show is starting November 5th and it will go for the year leading up to election day, which is November 5th, the following year. Uh, so, uh, when that is over, I will obviously assess what's going on at that point. And for all I know, I, I know myself too well to promise that that's the day that I'm leaving. But it's the day I'm telling myself I will be my final day as an official, like, I'm on the air, I'm a YouTuber, I'm doing things this routinely, whatever. Will you still see me on stuff? Of course. I will be a guest on these channels, and I will be more involved behind the scenes than I've ever been. Uh, will you hear from me? Uh, uh, and see me hosting as frequently. Definitely, definitely not. Um, we're, we're doing awesome things here. We're expanding. We've got a new producer who is currently in training. Uh, I think we will have more of that uh, coming soon. I am planning to revitalize the um, efforts to launch our second channel, or our third channel, it will be now, The Line X, uh, and launch the new shows that are more uh, tailored to adult topics, th themes of sexuality, recovering from... Uh, the sexual damage um, and, and things that religion, that when you get out, you can feel very afraid of. And then also focusing he more heavily on efforts to um, build good, strong communities and, and make a clear place where if a person leaves religion, we have something of a deconstruction factory that they can, that they can find uh, and, and find, even if we aren't always the resource we're a good place to help you find those resources as we often work with uh, amazing resources like black non-believers or recovering from religion and the like. Um, so the line X, uh, is, I guess the sometime show is the next big thing. That will be an extension of this network. That'll be over on what was my channel. I'm, I want to change the name of the channel, but we lose verification and I haven't gotten an email yet responding to how long will it take to re-verify because verification is actually pretty important. We'll actually now get to apply for verification for this channel, uh, and it's super helpful because we hit 100K. Uh, and then the Line X will be, I hope, finally launching with new shows, not just clips, uh, though you're going to see a, a big influx flux of clips very soon um, on that channel. The, the, the Line X with the new, new stuff, new things, and, and, and new shows uh, will be starting soon because my vision for the future, I, th I think I've shared this before, but is that essentially I want us to have somewhere between, uh, six to eight hours of programming across all networks, five to six days a week. Um, probably five days, probably Sunday through Thursday. And then special events like debates, which I think are officially starting in November. We just have to get the details locked in, uh, uh, debates on the weekends. Yeah. Um, that's that's pretty much the extent of my update and my vision for the future. Matt, do you have a... I may have just um, added some more work for you today. Sure. Um, I, don't, I can't promise anything, but since we have just elected a new Speaker of the House who is a 
Christian nationalist, right wing evangelical, like way, way deep in the batshit end of this. Um, I reached out. There's no guarantee this will happen. And and Jimmy can say, oh, we don't we don't have the capability to do that right now because I didn't ask. But I reached out to Andrew Seidel to see to say, hey, we just went live because we hit 100,000 subscribers. If you're free and you're able to come on and talk about the new speaker, I'd, I'd love to see if that can happen. Hell but, yeah. Yeah. And honestly, what I would do is if he's down, I would put him in my spot and uh, at first bring him in and then I would build a, a scene where I, we can have the three of us. But I, I'd be completely fine with that. Zero. Uh, yep. uh, this guy, by the way, Mike Johnson from Louisiana. Um, oof. I, normally, this is the period of time here between four and six when I would go be going to do all kinds of research on whatever it was that was my hang up that I wanted to talk about. Uh, the Republicans have finally... Um, Finally picked a speaker, uh, a speaker who uh, supports a national ban on abortion, uh, who is opposed to uh, LGBT rights, who trash talked atheism and uh, and and linked it to communism in his acceptance speech when right after uh, being voted in there. Um, he's opposed to medical marijuana. He doesn't think uh, he questions the scientific consensus on climate change. Um, he is a Trump supporter who was elected in 2016. Um, he claimed that Trump cooperated fully with the special counselor's investigation. He opposes raising the minimum wage. He is in favor of prayer in schools. Uh, he, I just, this is like super Jesus-y in his, in his, um, his acceptance speech or whatever as as speaker, which I you know I was which I don't I don't know what the restrictions would be. I think we can just play it, but if we could get that footage and go through it and talk about what he actually said, because it was all about God, it was an acceptance speech all about God, and uh, or or at least a good chunk of it. So yeah, he's the new speaker of the house. Let me see what I can do on that end. Um, yeah, it's it's really fucking bleak. Also, I don't know if you already mentioned it, was a big part of pushing the big lie, uh, was in full support of the Texas lawsuit to overturn the election, to legal efforts, to delegitimize, to uh, decertify the vote, basically Biden votes. Um, gave a lot of lip service today between the speech and then the, uh, inter the, the questions he took after to the idea that he and... Uh, Joaquin Jeffries are going to be able to find common ground and do things, but if if past if past is precedent, uh, it seems very unlikely. Yeah, it's uh, it's wild. Trying to see if I can find a uh, easy place I could quickly download the acceptance speech for. He was elected in he was elected in 2016, filling a uh, a seat that had been held by John Fleming for eight years. In 2018, he won his second term. In 2020, he won his third term. And in 2022, he ran unopposed and won re-election. So he's, he's being re-elected essentially every uh, two years. And um, it, it is absolutely wild that um, the, the previous uh, person who they, they'd put up for this, Emmer, was, um, wasn't Jesus-y enough. Because... Yeah. He didn't want to shit all over gay people. Uh, and so other members of the Republican Party basically told him that he needed to get right with Jesus. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just, now don't get me wrong. If I had to say anything, this guy is a figurehead puppet. He's not right. an architect of anything. He is not here, you know, he's not a Nancy Pelosi. Um, he doesn't have some grand plan. He's not a Jim Jordan. He's not, uh, you know, gung ho. He is absolutely the rightest of right wing ideologues that they could get and put in. This is how you get, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene to say, yes, I'll support this guy, because all they cared about was getting another Trumper. And, um, I didn't, I didn't, did you see what the, the, the final vote was? Uh, two, I want to say it was 220 to 208. 
I think that's correct. Did, did all of the Democrats vote against him finally? I I don't know because 212 would have been all the Democrats voting for Joaquin Jeffries. So I imagine there were some who were absent. It would really annoy me if there was some like equivalent of Joe Manchin. But let me look. Speaker vote. Um, all 209. So it was, it was 220 to 209. All 209 voted for Joaquin Jeffries. Okay. So yeah, he he is the he has the shortest House membership tenure of any speaker in 140 years. Basically, the only way somebody the only the only time there was a speaker who had a shorter tenure is when there were only people with shorter tenures available. Yeah. Oh, well, and it's also kind of worth noting like I don't want to speak to clichés, but here I go. Louisiana Republicans are a different level of nuts than most of the uh, like it's kind of what I feel like a lot of times when people talk about Alabama Republicans or Mississippi Republicans, which are nuts, but they're usually visualizing Louisiana, Louisiana Republicans. Gomert is from Louisiana. It's, it's right. almost, they celebrate ignorance. They, they are excited for a person to be uh, visibly and demonstrably stupid from Louisiana. Now I will say uh, he isn't as obviously stupid as, as some of his, um, peers from Louisiana, but, uh, it, it is, it, yeah, Louisiana's right wing party is as, which is why a lot of the, uh, really frivolous lawsuits and, and some of the worst things you've heard about, uh, trying to overturn the election and as well as abortion stuff have come out of Louisiana. And did you mention that he is, uh, very, very pro-life? Oh yes. He wants yeah. a, he wants a federal ban on abortion. Yeah. Yeah, he's not good. That's not pro. That's not pro life. That's anti choice. Right. Right. And and the 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 strongest of the anti choice. I mean, he wants he wants a national abortion ban. Um, yeah, it's. I I haven't had enough time to go through all this because when they when they put him up, I was like, well, that guy, uh, you know, probably shouldn't be speaker. But then I realized. He's not setting an agenda. He he's not the one, you know. This is absolutely going to be the the Matt Gates, Marjorie Taylor Green, you know, giving giving them a slight edge that they didn't have with McCarthy. Yeah. Yeah. Um but sorry, I'm waiting for something to get straight. I, I do want to say quickly, because you put it in a form that we can't actually put on the screen. So as far as our super chat system goes, we can't put those animated stickers. It, it doesn't work with what we use anyway. Um, so me and my human, thank you very, very much. Uh, they had given us 49, 99, 50 bucks, uh, on this, our day of celebration, finally hitting a hundred thousand subscribers, uh, and, and being able to apply for verification, which is one of the biggest things that I'm looking forward to as well as that which will come after. I've got a couple of comments in chat I want to hit, and then um, there's one, I have one question about the call-in queue, but uh, somebody said, seriously, what the fuck, how can someone vote for this? Here's the thing. Um, the Republicans have the majority in the House. They were going to vote for this. The Democrats were going to vote against it. This wasn't, a, just in case you're outside the United States, people didn't vote for this our representatives did that and the how it's amazing that things haven't been much worse for much longer um because the republicans control the house but they're so inept and so busy fighting uh amongst themselves that you know it was basically eight of them plus democrats that ousted mccarthy and threw everything into chaos and then they couldn't agree on anybody until they got this guy which means that the eight ultra right wing maga trump republicans are in control of the house of representatives because the republicans are going to vote with those eight otherwise they're going to be uh people are going to just say oh well you decided with the democrats you decided with the democrats you decided they've, they already tried to, they tried to blame the democrats for ousting kevin mccarthy when uh all the, all the Democrats did is is vote, uh, uh, you know, along with it. It was Matt Gates that that raised it. 
Uh, I sent you a couple of quick notes on that call that you were wondering about. Yep. The other one is somebody said, I wish I could afford Super Chat to say this. I love you, Matt, and go fuck yourself, Jimmy. I don't know what. What's LMHT? LMHT. I don't know. I don't know. Congratulations on 100,000 subs. First of all, nobody needs to be able to support a Super Chat to uh, participate. One of the things that we've done over the uh, over the last couple, well, three years that, that I've been doing this uh, here with Jimmy is the line exists primarily so that we can take calls and call in show that's you know that's that's the deal we made at the beginning is that every show that's on this network will be a call in show and that includes when we finally get end boss and debate type stuff uh, up and running and my apologies while i am mostly you can blame me for any delays and i'm not i'm not just joking and jimmy's gonna you know laugh or shrug it off um seriously jimmy does a lot of work arden does a lot of work i don't um, I try to make sure that I have guests for the shows when I can get guests, uh, and when I feel like I need them. And my process is primarily, I live my life live. I do live shows. I've done live shows for the last 19 years. Uh, I take live calls. I don't do a lot of prep stuff. I don't even do a lot of prep for debate stuff. I, I jot down notes. Somebody was, somebody was trying to message me about my debate opponent for this weekend. And I don't know who the person is, nor do I care. This could be an absolute train wreck. It could be a monumental waste of time. Um, I focus on the subject and I do that for a number of different reasons. I, I find that when people focus on the person that they're debating, I think that's a mistake. And I think it's a mistake that so many opponent of my debate opponents and so many callers make, because instead of making it about the subject, they try to make it about me. Um, Daniel yeah. did that. Yes, I'm getting ready to to finish up. Uh, uh, sorry, there was a thing in chat that I'm going to have to address after I'm done with this. But Daniel did that and tried to um, engage at a level where it made it about me, which just makes it easier because I'm irrelevant. Yeah. So. Well, you and the other secular humanists like George W. Bush. So somebody in chat said this, and I want—I don't want to go through everything that happened. In I missed your—I missed your joke. <laughs> I said Bush. you and the other secular humanists like George W. Bush. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So somebody in chat just said this, and I'm going to address it, and then I'm going to drop it, and then I'm going to tell them to drop it. Uh, Matt, I was using ChatGPT to better understand emerging properties of water. I was not using ChatGPT to argue with or play games. You misunderstood me completely this morning on Twitch. Love you. I didn't misunderfucking stand you. You cannot use ChatGPT to better understand the emerging properties of water. ChatGPT is predictive text. It's not instructive. It doesn't know shit. This is what I was trying to explain to you. Go study the subject. Get the fuck away from ChatGPT and don't ever ask me for my thoughts and then feed me your thoughts when they're actually coming from ChatGPT. You're lucky I haven't banned you there and here. Don't do it. And don't come in fucking telling me that I misunderstood you. Learn how to do research. ChatGPT yep. is not fucking research. Yep. 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 That is not what the uh, ChatGPT, when it doesn't know, doesn't admit it doesn't know. It makes up answers that look correct, yep. that are, it that appear structured well. Whatever. Yeah. Now, if you want to get a little closer to better, if you have uh, a stack of papers, that are reliable, that if you have good reason to trust the contents of those or say articles from uh, uh, scientific journals or something, you can feed those to ChatGPT and ask for summaries and you have a higher confidence level. But even then, if it thinks you've asked a question that the paper can't answer also, it's not going to tell you no, unless you give it hard instructions basically to behave differently. So also, use it as a tool. I, I wonder, because you've, you've used ChatGPT way more than I have. Yeah, I wonder if you could ask ChatGPT, where should I go to research this topic? If sure. it would give decent web links, that's fine. That would you know, like it, maybe there are people whose Google foo sucks; they yeah. don't know what to Google. And similarly, when I uh, like, if I was using um, one of the AI art generating uh, doohickeys. ChatGPT is incredibly good at coming up with good prompts. It's incredibly good at coming up with clickbait titles. 
uh, for things, all those things. Claude is better. Because those- Way better. Oh, it's it. Oh, Claude yeah. Claude AI, if, if people are looking for recommendations, way better at creative stuff than ChatGPT by miles. But all of those things are, um, they're, they're creating predictive text. So if what you're seeing is, hey, what's going to resonate most with the crowd? It's going to go out and, and, and get like an aggregate of what's already resonating with crowds. And then boom, uh, going on there. Uh, if, but, you know, if you wanted to research something and you were just not good at Google, like you're not good at comp typing up the question that gets you to the right answer. I'm wondering if ChatGPT or something else would actually be good at that. And I suspect it might. I, uh, I, so I just did a test one. Where should I go to research the evidence for evolution? Uh, it said researching the evidence for evolution involves exploring a range of scientific disciplines, including biology, paleontology, genetics, and anthropology. Here's a guide on where to start and which sources to consider books, the origin of species. It, by, I'm, I'm just going to list the books uh, and then it, but it does give a little summary books, the origin of species, the, uh, number two, the blind watchmaker by Richard Dawkins, uh, all Dawkins things aside. That is an excellent evolution book. Uh, why evolution is true by Jerry a coin. One that I haven't read myself, yep. but I've heard recommended by I biologists have. tons. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, uh, Jerry and I have some disagreements obviously. Uh, but Jerry's been here to the house and we shot an interview and his book is an excellent resource. Yeah. Uh, scientific journals such as nature science and PLOS, PLOS biology regularly publish argue, uh, Articles related to evolutionary biology. Journal of Evolutionary Biology and Evolution are specifically dedicated. Uh, universities and muse museums such as the Smitho Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History. Online resources. Talk Origins Archive and UC Berkeley's Understanding Evolution. And then it actually starts to list some of the categories of evidence, like genetics and gives a little explanation. Fossil records. Books like Wonderful Life will get you fossil record stuff. Uh, for genetics, they recommended The Ancestor's Tale by Richard Dawkins, which is not a book name I am familiar with by him. Let me see if that's real. Um, yeah, okay, yep, he does have a book called The Ancestor's Tale. Just making sure he wasn't the chat GPT, I, I called it he, <laughs> that chat GPT wasn't uh, making that answer up, mansplaining. Uh, and then offers some documentaries that two of them I recognize are very good ones and also recommends the National Center for Science Education. Uh, so pretty good answer on if you were looking for evolution. Yeah, it's it's not bad. There's a, it makes me wonder, you know, like I have some of my resources, both online and offline. Hey, Jim Barrows is in here. What up, Jim? Hey, Jim. I saw oh. you four wheeling the other day. So good, good deal. And somebody just asked me about you this morning while we were in Twitch. So awesome. It's Trump good supporters. To so many people show up for this. Don't bother in the live chat, Trump supporters. You'll just get deleted because we don't let people start complex in there. However, if you would like to talk about it, call in, tell us why you're supporting Trump. Yeah, I'd love to know because here's the thing. I, let me pop over to my Google Keep for a second because um, I have my, my list of things. So first of all, I was going to talk about the new speaker. I'm not going to dig in much more on Mike Johnson right now um, because I'm hoping that Andrew Seidel will, will have time to come over because he already warned people even before the vote when this guy was announced about how this guy is a Christian nationalist. And I really want to be able to, to address all of his bad points, but because we started two hours early because you guys are wonderful and put us over the 100,000 mark, um, I don't have all the information on all his bad points. So I'm waiting for... Andrew to come in and help. But yeah, now we're kicking it up over 100,000 100, with 35 and more. Um, but the other, there were, there were several other things on my hang up list for today. One of them is that uh, not only has Chesbro pled, pled guilty, yeah. um, but Sidney Powell has pled guilty. And now Jenna, is it Ellis? Jenna Ellis, yeah. Jenna Ellis has now pled guilty. And the coup de grace. Uh, yes. Meadows now has immunity in exchange for his testimony. And that's a different, that's different from pleading guilty. Yes. That is, there's some, st this guy is as close to the president as you could possibly be for that period of time. When you yes. are the president's chief of staff, I don't know how many of you, if you haven't watched West Wing, go watch all of it. And basically, um, Mark Meadows is the shitty version of Leo McGarry. 
uh, or C.J. Craig. But as as the president's essentially supposed to be right hand man, he at least has access and knows things. When when the pro, when the when the district attorney, um, well, wait, it wasn't it wouldn't be the D.A. It would be the um, attorney general of New York, right? The grant him immunity. Uh, it is the Jack is Smith it? investigation. So it would be in his three districts. So I think that's two in Florida right. and one in New York. In any case, when Mark Meadows gets immunity in exchange for testimony that's coming on Donald Trump, you've now got multiple lawyers who were Trump's lawyers, although Trump says they weren't. Yeah. He, Sidney Powell wasn't a lawyer. Go ahead. Never even met her. Never met Sidney Powell. Don't know nothing about her. Uh, Who? Yeah, they're they're all pleading guilty or getting immunity deals. This is big, yeah, and it's important. And it was really, I mean, it was on my list of things to make sure we covered today. Um, also, Trump has been fined once again for violating a gag order. And frankly, I'm annoyed. If you've got somebody who is supposed to be worth billions, no matter how much he lies about it, the guy's got a lot of money, um, or, or at least should have access to quite a bit of money. Um, the judge has now fined him twice that I'm aware of for $5,000 for violating the gag order. Yeah. Please, your honor, with all due respect, if I'm worth a billion dollars and you find me 5,000, that's not an incentive for me to stop doing it. You already know he has no willpower. You already know he's not going to stop no matter what. 5,000 bucks is nothing for him. And he will campaign about how you're an asshole judge and make a hundred times more than that in a couple of hours. Yeah. Throw the motherfucker in jail. I, I think... If I'm, it, first of all, I have no uh, expertise on this. So uh, Andrew might join us and go, Jimmy, you, you're full of shit. And so I, I fully acknowledge that. But uh, one quick clarification, though, again, for a billion dollars, this is this is a minimal thing. It was 5,000 the first time, 10,000 now. So we're up to 15,000. Again, for a billionaire, it doesn't change Matt's point literally at all. Uh, uh, you know, that's like, I I... All of the change in my house is proportionally still more than what that amount of money is to a billionaire. Yes. Uh, and so, uh, but uh, fuck, where was I going with it? Oh, I hope what is happening is he just doesn't think he can go straight to jail. That the judge is going, I'll give you a strike. I'll give you another strike and I'll give you a strike three to make you understand that the gag order is going to get enforced. It's not that we say there's a gag order and then we back away because, you know, you got to have your freedom of speech. And that's a big, it's a big, frankly, it's a big uh, violation, freedom of speech, Second Amendment. Uh, <laughs> I It's the First Amendment for the record. Uh, anyway, uh, I, 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 I'm hoping that it's, he's going to do a third one and then it's jail. Um, and I don't think Donald Trump's brain can handle the intake of jail. Uh, and the judges told him, imprisonment is on the table. I can imprison you for contempt and, or for violating gag orders. Um, and I'm really hoping that after three strikes, Donald Trump has the normal intake procedure, which includes stripping down, getting naked, spreading your cheeks and coughing, which is a thing I think he can't handle. I think he might inform the, uh, tell the secret service to, I don't know what he would do. Um, now also, am I terrified of what happens if he goes to jail? Yes. I fully, fully, I, I think that if, if somehow the judge isn't in contact with somebody who is allowed to, uh, send the national guard, that would be crazy. Uh, because in preparation for any time he might go to jail, go to prison, the type of protest that might show up in response and that he might be okay with as this is the guy, those guns aren't here for me. They're not here for me. Uh, that guy going to prison, what type of protest he would uh, summon? I don't know. So I'm simultaneously like, 
it's one of those things where I'm I'm both you have to and I'm also terrified. But the you have to is larger than the terror. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's a fucked up to the point, Matt. It, actually, this is a question I haven't asked you yet. If Jack Smith were to go to Donald Trump and say, we will get you a plea deal for every case, including Georgia, you won't go to jail, you won't go to prison, but the plea deal includes that you will never seek public office again for the rest of your life. Would you say that is worth him not going to prison or jail? No. I think I, I, think I, 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 think I would be so relieved that he wouldn't be in that I would understand, and I don't know, I think, I'm, I think my needle's on the side of, if that's what it takes, do it. Because I think otherwise, there's a chance we elect somebody who's in prison with a pardoning pen. Um, my, my, I have reasons for my no. Uh, I sent you a message, by the way, uh, sure. and we'll get, to, we'll get to calls in a minute. I got one more thing on my hangout list, but the reason that I'm saying no for me uh, on that right now is this. Um, you're still going to have to listen to him. You're, he's still going to post. He's still going to be in the news. He's still going to be a former president. And if he's not serving jail time and can't run for office, there's nothing. I mean, okay, you, you can extend that to where he can't serve any government, you know, function or whatever else. But he already has just a parade of lackey puppets. Like Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, I, wow. I'm, I, I was about to say something that was potentially sexist. Um, but well, okay. Yeah. Margie Taylor Greene's got her tongue so far up Trump's ass. It's, it, it, there's no way to even process this. Nobody, you know, Oh, Trump, this Trump, this Trump, this, and you're going to have those eight Republicans in the house and a number of others basically getting their marching orders from someone who is free, who has never been held accountable for anything and who won't be elected president again but could be dictator in chief on the side or president via proxy. Um, it, it is, you know, it, and let's say, what if, what if uh, I'm going to, here, let me throw the uh, curveball. Let's say Marjorie Taylor Greene runs for president, gets elected, and appoints Donald Trump as her chief of staff. No deal from a federal prosecutor is going to prevent that from happening. Now, I don't know that anything like that's likely to happen. But I want to see actual accountability and saying, okay, you did this and 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 we're going to let you get away with all of it as long as you're never able to do any of that again. I, I, I can't. Yeah. I, so plea deals do also come with parole. So I'm not necessarily, I, I get it. It's not prison. Uh, I'm not necessarily suggesting something where he doesn't have some terms of probation as well. Um, but I don't know. I, I think I am, maybe I'm living fearfully and that's entirely possible, but I think I'm not right. only afraid of him in prison with a pardon pen. I'm also afraid of the potential January 21st 2.0 that shows up to his prison to get him. Um, but also it's, I mean, whoever we elect next as the next, there's going to be another Republican president at some point. Whoever, whoever that is, they can just turn around and pardon Trump. Yeah. So, okay, I have another question for you that I bet we disagree on. Do you think okay. Joe Biden would pardon Donald Trump? I don't know. I, I, I do. I can understand, based on like what happened with Nixon, I can understand the arguments for doing it. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not, I think I would, I thought, I think I thought that Joe would, and I think you or somebody else made a case for why you didn't think that was it. And I think whoever made that case kind of convinced me. I'm not convinced that Biden would do that. Okay. Are you rolling commuting the sentence in with pardon? Because when I was asking, I was. Oh, um, I, I believe that Biden would probably commute the sentence. Yeah. It's there. So it's kind of the same thing. If you, if you look at what happened just a couple of weeks ago when we were talking, when we were talking about important things like uh, Israel bombing Gaza, yeah, you have the president of the United States making statements, which I am thrilled that the president of the United States is actually 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 acting like a president and acting like a proper diplomat. But then you had Bernie Sanders make a statement, which I read on the show 
because it better reflected my own views on the issue. Now, I don't know if I talked about it at the time, Arden and I talked about it offline. It would not surprise me, knowing the way politics works, if Biden and Bernie got together and coordinated those statements with Biden saying, look, I need to say these things as president to give our, you know, full support to Israel. But this is more complicated than that. And we need somebody to also say that we are supportive and in, in favor of, uh, of Palestinians not being, you know, killed. And you know, Bernie's like, oh, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. And so Bernie goes and does that. That kind of cooperation, even if it didn't happen, uh, I'm okay with that. But it would be it would be cool if that's what did happen, because there are certain things. There's a, I don't mind a president that doesn't just vomit every thought that enters his head. Yeah, I'm in favor of that. And if that means that that Biden takes a, gets shit on a little bit for being not great on on Gaza. That's okay, as long as at the end of the day, the United States ends up doing the right thing. And we haven't yet. I, yeah. I, I'm still not convinced we've done the right thing yet. But I, there are certain things that are, that are happening that seem to be the wrong thing, too. And some of those are going to be out of control because uh, without vetoing a bill that bills that contain a lot of other stuff, which Biden's unlikely to do, um, they may be unstoppable. But there's some. Yeah. The, the, it's an extremely complex thing that I, we'd have to pick a topic. And if we want to go Israel Gaza, we'll do that for the rest of the night if we want to go. But I think tonight we're more focused on the uh, Trump and uh, the developments yeah. with the, the Republican Party who right now are trying to claim today as some victory of proof that the, that the right can govern and that they can come together and do shit. When this was their disaster from the onset. And they're single, a single member with a grudge, granted with uh, seven others who had his back, but was able to take out, and, and an extremist, by the way, an extremist with a grudge, was able to take out their party's nominee just to do it, just to say they did, did it, and then put somebody in his place that isn't a more effective person. Uh, I, I don't really understand the... I don't know. I don't understand the appeal of this new guy over Kevin McCarthy. They both suck in similar ways, but the new guys, you know, what is the phrase wetter behind the ears for amateurs? Is that what it is? Wet behind, wet, the, wet ears? behind the ears? Yeah. I think that's what that phrase means. I'm really bad at those so, cliche phrases. Just um, quickly, uh, Trump was fined $10,000 this afternoon. So yeah. it was $5,000 the first time, and I guess in $10,000 this time, yeah. for the second time violating the gag order and evidently the judge put him up on the witness stand and yeah admonished him and, ba and basically yep. told so uh the judge put him on the stand asked him who he was referring to the lawyers made the case that he was actually referring to michael cohen who was some feet away however uh trump has already used this phrase the person next to him the, the legal team and trump have tried to claim that they actually have two judges on this case because the clerk is usually sat in front of the judge and this one sat to the side and so has a much bigger role or whatever their uh silly contention is there uh and and basically from that it was clear from context that that trump was lying and uh, I'm trying to remember what the phrase the judge used, but that he was a, was it a non-credible witness or something? There was a phrase that he used that was pretty damning. But basically, the judge not only fined him, but put him on under oath and then called him a liar by fining him. Then they tried to appeal the decision, not as not in a formal appeal, but say, judge, you need to reconsider. Judge took the time, reconsidered, and goes, now nah, I'm still positive he's a liar. Um so a double consideration, you're a liar, you just lied under oath, $10,000 fine. Yeah, I and and I'm hoping that that ends up being strike two. Yep. And that strike three is, okay, bailiff, take former President Trump into custody are the first words uttered the next time he violates this gag order. Um, there's one last thing I want to hit on, and... This is both serious and trivial. 
but it was a bit of fun when I was making a list of the things that I'm hung up on. Rolling Stone magazine recently released a list of the 250 guitar greatest guitarists of all time. 250 greatest guitarists of all time. And it is the shittiest list you could imagine. Not only are there people on there who mm, probably, well, there are people on there who definitely don't deserve to be by virtue of the fact that there are people who were not included on that list. People like Roy Clark, people like Ingve Momstein, um, just a parade of pe people who have guitars named after them. Zach fucking Wild was on that was was not on that list. Um, I I can't remember all of the people. I I just watched a here's fifty people who should have been on that list but weren't video uh, earlier today. Um, it, it's amazing, and I get it. There's been a lot of guitarists. And so now we're at the point where if you were in a significant uh, rock and roll band, you're probably a really, really, really good guitarist. And it's got to be really difficult to narrow it down to 250. But they ignore country just pretty much with a couple of exceptions. They'll, they'll make sure there's some country guitarists on there. Um, but largely they ignore it. They're going to largely ignore like jazz and, and indie guitarists and stuff like that. Um, most of the people you can think of and would name, most of the people most people would name made the list. But there are a bunch of people who did not make the list. And holy crap, when I, when I, when I heard people start rattling off, I, I think Pat Metheny's not on the list. Um, it's like these are the people who taught and inspired the top 50 that are going to be on the list. And it is, yeah, Joe Pass wasn't on it. I see people in chat commenting on this. This should not be a big deal. Let me, let me be very clear. Um, the United States is a hot mess right now. There's also a war in Israel right now, in Gaza. I should say a war in Palestine because that's as close as there is to Palestine is Gaza. Um, we have a, ma a former president who's indicted on 90 billion charges in <laughs> multiple cases. We have lawyers turning state's evidence and agreeing to testify, uh, just all kinds of stuff. And it seems silly to give a shit about Rolling Stone and their list of the 250 greatest guitarists of all time. I only bring it up because I think it's possible that it is an example of and indicative of a real problem that goes beyond this. No, Brad Paisley did not make the list, which is, that's the country guitarist. Roy Clark and Brad Paisley are the two country guitarists that should have absolutely been on the list. And, and whoever wrote that article, Rolling Stone should just smack themselves in the face for not putting Brad Paisley and Roy Clark on there. But I've been noticing stuff. There are countless Twitter accounts and, and on other social media that seem to exist only to intentionally get things wrong in order to drive up engagement of people saying, no, 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 you got this wrong. Mm -hmm. We see it with absolute like Instagram uh, videos of people Here's a cooking recipe that you just can't miss. And it's absolute shit. It was uh, hot dogs rolled in cheese, rolled in bacon, dipped in flour, deep fried for like 20 or 30 seconds so that the bacon wasn't even done or anything else. And, you know, I, I watched that video and other stuff. All this stuff is there because we and I am one of the most guilty. We do not have the ability to not just say, okay, that person's an idiot and I'm not going to bother commenting. We have to correct people. And I am super guilty. I spent today on Twitter prior to, to going live calling out another atheist. And granted, he's shitty and like to 
proclaim himself as skeptic extraordinaire. I think it was a troll account, but I don't have any way of demonstrating that. But it was just, he was just spamming. Jesus never existed. Jesus never existed. Jesus never existed. Jesus never existed over and over for multiple days. And so finally, I was like, okay, skeptic extraordinaire, how do you demonstrate that your claim is true? And his response to me was, it proves itself. And then he went on to try to get me or somebody else to try to prove that Jesus did exist. And I'm like, I didn't make any statement at all about whether or not Jesus existed. I'm talking about epistemology. I'm talking about you asserted something. Somebody asked you how you could demonstrate it. You refuse to demonstrate it, saying it demonstrates itself. And then you try to push the burden of proof onto them. This outrage, this clickbait outrage stuff is what the world is running on. And I think that it's not unreasonable to conclude that Rolling Stone magazine posted an absolute undeniable clickbait article of the 250 greatest guitarists of all time, specifically so they can get Rick Beato and a bunch of other folks with millions of subscribers to be like, what the fuck are you guys thinking? This is absolute, and, and now it's all anybody's talking about. Well, within certain circles, I get it. Some of you weren't paying any attention to it at all. My eyes glazed over just now. Yeah. <laughs> My, the, the thing is, this is happening everywhere. I, I bring the, I bring this up because it's happening everywhere, getting yeah. us to click on things. And what it's, what it's also doing is meaning none of us can have any real good confidence that the information we're getting about important things, like who's going to be Speaker of the House, what's going on in Gaza, how do we have confidence that the information that we're getting is even passably good and not biased bullshit? When right off the bat, there was a, a number of people who declared that Israel bombed a Baptist hospital at Gaza. And then a bunch of evidence came out showing that it may have been a missile launched from Hamas that exploded or was shot down. And from that, that explosion hit the parking lot next to a hospital. And so the original report of there being hundreds of dead people was corrected to being significantly less, but still, it's still a loss of life. And now you've got, well, look, Israel did this. No, Hamas did this. Israel did this. Now, what hope does the average person, certainly the average person here in the United States, have of knowing what the truth is? Because the instant something happens, somebody can post their suspicion or a lie to social media. And whichever one gets, seems, feels right or is most popular, takes off running. There was somebody in chat just a little while ago who, who asked me to sp speculate as to whether or not the United States government may, what is the likelihood the United States government may have cooperated with Israel to give them an excuse to attack Gaza and everything. I don't want, if you're going to speculate about conspiracy theory shit, leave my chat now. Yeah, that's some truth I have shit. zero interest in it. And I have zero interest in people who think that way. It's hard enough. Yeah to get to, do we have good information on this? Can we yep. put together a good list without adding confusion, speculation, suspicions? I don't know how to fix the world. I don't, I don't know how to make sure that we're getting good information. It is incredibly frustrating, but I do know. Oh, don't go yet. Don't, that, don't move on yet. I do know that we had 100,000 subscribers today. And that makes me at least optimistic that some of the other people who are as frustrated as we are with this situation and who may be frustrated about how do we get good information, that at least maybe together we can say, hey, I got this information and I think it's trustworthy, and then have people say, no, 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 that was a bad source as well. Yeah, I just didn't want to jump from the Israel thing because uh, uh, I did want to add a additional point of clarification on the, so we had the initial thing, hospital struck by Israel, then actually now the evidence shows that it was 
uh, uh, perhaps a misfired rocket in Gaza. And now uh, we have now even major outlets like New York Times covering that the two major pieces of evidence for that uh, have turned out to be not true, that the phone call between the supposed Hamas terrorists is extremely likely to have been faked. Uh, and then the video of the missile malfunctioning in air was... Now, this is not to say that that means that this missile is also what hit the hospital, but the missile shown to be claimed to be the misfired thing is actually now considered to be more likely an Iron Dome missile, which would be from the IDF. So just also adding that even that now the new, uh, yeah. uh, the new place we are with it is in it, is in it of itself, even if true now has evidence, I guess you have the two possibilities and both of them have evidence behind them that have been debunked. So it's even harder because uh, 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 you it's here's the evidence. It was Israel. Here's the evidence. It was Gaza. And both uh, uh, have been adhered to strictly by a lot of people. And we have no fucking clue. But I couldn't as a uh, leftist who keeps yelling free Palestine on Instagram. Uh, I know I'm a hero, uh, but I couldn't let that. I, I had to add that on to the end as well. Yeah. And that's partially what I'm talking about is, uh, you know, I, I served eight and a half years in the United States Navy, and I was in uh, during the Gulf War, Operation uh, Desert Shield, Desert Storm, Provide Comfort, Iraqi Freedom. Um, and when you're in the military, you don't get, well, if you're me, you don't get much information. You follow orders, and you don't necessarily know what's going on. Yeah. The war that I was involved with was one of the first ones where cnn was like on our aircraft carrier so my mom was able from home to actually see me standing in line in the mess hall to go get some food but what information did i have no nothing and by the way i was pretty much apolitical non-voter um i, I was it you know just a, a, a mind a head empty buffoon for a good chunk of that since then we've we have internet access and you and i have more access to more information and better information than ever in the history of the world the problem is we don't have the tools uh either within ourselves and the tools with outside of ourselves to filter all of that information to ensure that we are likely building a model that is accurate for things that we can't investigate. I, I don't know what to do. Yeah. It's we hard calls. If you want to, if you're ready. Yeah. I guess last thing before we jump into calls, because I know that most of you actually looking at the uh, graph have been here since we, after we covered it, uh, on this, uh, at the beginning of the show, this uh, number up here crossed from 99,000 something to over 100,000. You see people keep doing this where they're playing with, they like to see that if I do a click, it causes something to happen on the show, which is why for the moment, we're going to take it away because I just said it, which is going <laughs> to encourage people. But a huge thank you to everybody who has gotten us over 100K. Uh, this is a, a big monumental moment. I hope that there is many more amazing moments to come. Uh, and for people who are watching now who don't know if they want to later go back to the beginning, we did talk a little bit about other things like the uh, future of this channel, what our... Uh, how long we've been going for at it, uh, and my retirement. We talked about that a little. No, not literally. I'll still be on, heavily in the production mix. Uh, I do want to do one more super oh, I chat. This. Go ahead. Somebody in chat just said, so is Putin alive or dead? We didn't even discuss the fact that there's, yeah. and, and talking about sketchy news reports, that Putin evidently collapsed. Right, but the source of that is another thing that has, no story has ever been verified to be a lie nor has any story from them been verified to be true. Often post very sensational things uh, from Russia. So that's another one with the misinformation. We have no idea, but he may have had a heart attack on Monday, according to a source that seems to often post things that are unprovable uh, and we'll never know, unfortunately. Um, but I hope he dies. Is that okay to say? I, it's fine. If, if, if it's not okay to say, I'll, I'll take it as I did a bad thing. It was flawed of me to say, I hope Putin dies, but 
but at this point, my hopes of his reconciliation are low. Um, one super chat before we generally, jump in. Go ahead. Generally, I don't wish death on anybody. Yeah. Um, and, and what I do in a lot of cases, like, you know, oh, I didn't want Jerry Falwell to die, but I'm not going to fucking mourn the fact that he's gone. Um, I think, and, and this may be an incredibly flawed thing because what I've never met the person. Um, and what I know of him is potentially as sketchy as what I know about any number of other things. Um, I hope Putin dies too. But in case we have to worry about YouTube censors, we do mean of old age surrounded by loved one. I would have said ones, but as far as I know, it's one. He's got <laughs> the, one, the one girlfriend. Uh, thank you so much. Extremely, and a reminder, everybody, any super chat of over $10, we will read uh, maybe throughout the show, but we usually do it at the end of the show. Uh, $100 Canadian. Thank you so much from K Flute. Bravo to the line and everyone on it. This channel should be in the millions. I agree, but also hope that when that day happens, and I hope it does, I think it will, uh, I definitely hope I'm not a host on that day. That's too many. That's too many. <laughs> this is already hard enough to adjust to. Uh, Anyway, go ahead, pick a call, and uh, I think I've got name tags ready for all, if not. I'll well, we're just going to take them in order for now until we get some uh, theists in here. But we have Dennis in Oregon. Uh, Prunes are he, him. Hey, Dennis, how are you? Welcome to the special 100,000 subscriber hangup. I'm doing well. Thanks. Uh, long time listener, first time caller. Cool. Yay. And big fan of both you, Matt, and Jimmy. Well, we'll fix that real quick. Yeah, it's all downhill <laughs> from here. Go ahead, Dennis. Tell us what you're, what's on your mind. Uh, yeah. Um, so I had a heart attack a week ago, and I've been an atheist for a long time. And in the process of, I guess, being repaired on the table and uh, my brief recovery so far, no thoughts of God, no thoughts of prayer. Um, I am definitely proof that there are atheists in foxholes. Um, Yay. I was, <laughs> it was definitely a scary event. Um, and all, you know, the only thoughts that I had were being thankful for the timely response of the medics and uh, the qualified uh, medical professionals who took care of me. I'm right there with you. I, uh, I had my triple bypass uh, almost two years ago. And uh, yeah, ain't science awesome? It is. Uh, thankfully, I was, um, my repair was via catheter. I, didn't, I did not have to have open heart surgery. Nice. So my recovery will, will likely be uh, much quicker. Uh, but it was the, uh, if you're familiar with, I guess, cardiac anatomy, it's, it was the left anterior descending which is known mm -hmm. as the widow maker um so i was it was definitely a, a potentially fatal event yep i had my own heart attacks that i didn't even know about in part because uh, my diabetic neuropathy makes me not i i don't feel pain karate man broods uh, on the inside sort of thing <laughs> Dennis, I'd also encourage you uh, for if you want to have a longer discussion because we kind of we kind of do s stick to uh, questions and um, arguments on on the other shows. However, sure. if you've got general commentary you want to share about how that changed your life, finding purpose, and all that sort of stuff, uh, while facing your own mortality as a person who doesn't believe in an afterlife or doesn't believe in a god, uh, that is what Dying Out Loud. I, I highly recommend you'd call Dying Out Loud Dave Warnock show every Tuesday. Um, I think you'd probably find that conversation with the with dave who has als if you're not familiar with him he has als yep. he only has, i have seen some of dave's uh yeah, yeah. Only, he has some limited time left uh give him a call and and have the discussion about that sort of greater topic sure cool well, anything else thanks guys no congrats thanks, on 100k thank you dennis thank you all right we don't have any theists uh waiting yet on the line I will so, say uh, the next line, the le next call still seems spicy since we're doing some political stuff. But again, yeah, call to anybody out if you want to defend your God or your right wing, uh, your your allegiance to the right wing, or or especially Donald Trump. Call, let's do it. All right, here we go. We got Caleb. Caleb in Montana, pronouncer he him wants to talk about abortion laws. So welcome, Caleb. How you doing? 
Hi, I'm doing well. I just wanted to come on. I have some interesting ideas about the topic I want to share. So I'll just quickly preface. I was completely raised super ultra conservative. Every single abortion was wrong. Absolutely murder on every single one of them. And since that, I've been changing some of my political views and understanding the logic behind some of the laws. And so I'll just quickly state my stance and then um, hear your thoughts, I guess. So I'll quickly say that I I, I find a really, really hard time um, justifying an abortion after you take away the direct reliant on human resources. And that's where like you get to the violinist or the violinist argument where um, it's it changes, I think, in my mind from a bodily autonomy argument then to killing something because um, so where I, where I um, stand right now is I think that abortion should be legal up to the point of viability, but I don't think I could I could ever possibly right now. I don't know an argument that would get me past that point. So I was wondering um, what are your views on um, after the viability of a child abortions? Well, abortion only applies to non-viability. Once it's viability, then you have basically a C-section, a delivery. Um, or, sorry, sorry. Uh, what I meant to say was um, if it was taken outside of the mother based on science, like at 23 weeks or whatever, it could be sustained. I find it hard to um, justify an abortion at that point Caleb, knowing when, it could survive. When do you need to justify a a survivable, a, a fetus which has survivability, that there isn't some actual tremendous reason for it. Because the thing is, Caleb, is that you're calling in to go, hey, there's this bullshit claim right-wing people make that this is happening all the time. It isn't, and you'll actually find that any type of abortion that late in the game that is still an abortion is usually done out of compassion, not compassion for somebody who wants to get their weekend back compassion for a fetus that say doesn't have kidneys. So the blood isn't filtering. So the moment that they can no longer rely on the body of the mother, it's going to back up and upon being born is going to drown on its own blood and then die. And that there is no chance of, of saving it. That's, that's what a late term abortion is because everything else okay. You don't have an abortion, you have a delivery. So if a, if a fetus is viable, as Matt already pointed out, you deliver the fetus, you deliver, you, you have the baby, and then if you don't want it, you put it up for adoption. This thing of uh, these late-term abortions that up till the day of birth they want this whole thing is not a real thing. But whatever the answer is, it's not a question about what you think is moral and is and immoral. It's a question of, what amount do you believe the government belongs in a doctor's office with a person in regards to the autonomy of that person? Yeah. Right. And that's, that's where my point is. I feel like once um, a fetus or a child gets to the point of, say, even like the earliest that it could possibly be sustained without the mother's resources, then the, but on uh, that's, at like 23 weeks and that's still that's like only like halfway through a little half past halfway through a pregnancy but abortion is still legal at that point and it's not is it super rare at that point as well would you say i don't know what the statistics are at 23 weeks i know that using that number is the number of some fetuses have survived a premature birth at 23 weeks not without complications and not without problems uh, so, so we're not talking about healthy, but I don't know what the exact statistics are. It wouldn't matter to the original question of autonomy and the government's presence in the doctor's office. Abortion is the right okay. to okay, ter- and then- in, in, in induced abortion when we're talking about the legal rights. It's the right to terminate a pregnancy. It has nothing to do with whether or not th- that results in a dead fetus or dead child. But Caleb, are you ever going to be pregnant? No. Okay. Are you going to be the doctor of someone who's pregnant? No. Okay. Um, What right do you have ever to force someone else to remain pregnant against their will? What what would give you that right? I'm saying I I don't have that right, but I think it becomes a little bit more complicated um, when you start introducing the fact that a person could potentially be 
um, I'm, taking I'm an unnecessary risk toward a pregnancy. I'm sorry. So I'm sorry, but you don't get to decide for someone else what they should do. I don't care how complicated I'm aware you think it is. I don't care how complicated you think it is. Who are you? Who are any of us to jump into the decision between a pregnant person and their doctor on whether or not they're going to continue to be pregnant? Because because there is a human life involved. And this is where I think the problem arises. That is why there are laws against um like manslaughter, I'm unintentional sorry. manslaughter. I'm, You're I'm driving sorry, down Caleb. a Caleb. back road and Caleb. Caleb. I'm sorry, but if your response is because there's a human life involved, I don't give a fuck. That does not change whether or not we have the right to force someone to remain pregnant. How does how does the fact that there's another human life involved change whether or not you have the right to force someone to stay pregnant against their will? Well, that's okay. I would just like to say the analogy really fast. No, I'd like you to answer my question. Yeah, we'd like you to answer my question. We grasp the concept. We don't need you to turn it into a, if you had a lemonade stand, just answer the question asked. So the only reason that I think that there should be a law that would prevent the termination of some pregnancies is because of the fact that there is some responsibility involved. And I think the responsibility is very applicable in other areas that are also involving human lives. For example, if you are driving a no, car stop. that you know stop. has an extreme... Stop. You're not going to get to do the metaphor the anyway. Stop. stop. You don't get to assert responsibility as a justification to force someone to remain pregnant against their will. Consent to sex is not consent to becoming pregnant. It is consent to the risk of becoming pregnant. Consent to becoming pregnant is not consent to remaining pregnant. As long as there are other options, the responsible course of action would also be to terminate that pregnancy. You don't get to ignore just like, oh, if you, if you consent to, to, to getting in a car and getting in an accident, you're going to have to pay for it. Yes. And there are a number of different methods that you can use to alleviate your responsibility. But you don't get to decide how somebody else alleviates their responsibility. Caleb, there are also already laws that maintain, that prevent doctors from committing malpractice. They are rare, but we already have cases we can point to of doctors who were recklessly doing abortions and who were uh, not following the medical guidelines and not prioritizing the lives, as you put, the life of a human. That is the extent to which anything should exist. The fact that you still think there might be some room here to put in some law that will obviously be uh, utilized by the extreme states differently than the non-extreme states, despite the fact that we already have information on this, seeing how what abortion laws currently exist have fucked people over, the fact that the obscurity of a ban in Ohio required a 10-year-old to go to a different state it might have been Iowa, one of the two, they sound the same. Uh, uh, I think it was Iowa, to go to a different state to abort their rapist's baby. The right. fact that I, that's I, I already a problem and that. you want to sit there and go, maybe we should still we should add new laws when laws already exist to prevent malpractice, laws already exist to prevent people who are recklessly committing abortion, committing is the wrong word, performing abortions. Uh, the fact that you want more in a Christian nationalist country as this shows that you have this recklessness, uh, this recklessness of thought in regards to a fake problem that other people are telling you is real. That isn't. Okay. The, the only distinction I, mean, I was trying to point out is that in, in the case of a rape or like a failed vasectomy or something like that, it is completely, um, taken out of the responsibility of the person. And there is even, there is like no Caleb? risk of their taking. Like it is completely out of their Caleb. responsibility. Caleb, do you think we're idiots? No. Okay. 
if two people choose to have sex without any contraception and they get pregnant, and as a result of this, one of them ends up pregnant, how is that in any way different from a failed vasectomy with regard to whether or not they should be forced to carry a child to term? The views that have been um, that I've heard is that it is about the responsibility behind it because the failure rate Caleb, of a vasectomy is Caleb, one in two thousand. Caleb, Caleb, instead of telling me what you've heard, why don't you think if two couples are pregnant and one of them is the result of a failed vasectomy, and one of them, let's say there's 10 couples that are pregnant. One of them was a failed vasectomy. One of them was failed birth control of a different type. The other eight were careless and just had sex without protection. All 10 of them decide that they'd like to have an abortion. Are you going to tell any of them no? Well, that's, um, that's where it's, it's very hard to answer the make question. an argument against it. Caleb, that was a yes was or no question. That was a yes or no question. No. Neither am I. Do you know? Do you know what the rate, the abortion rate was? In 1973, when we, uh, when we, when Roe versus Wade was passed or was allowed? No, I don't know. 16.3%. Do you know what it was in 2017? No. 13.5%. In 2017, abortion was at an historic low. The lowest point ever since Roe v. Wade. There's not a fucking abortion problem here. There's abortion misinformation here. And at the end of the day, no matter how many abortions there are or aren't, by the way, there it, it's been dropping steadily since 1981 because we are doing a better job of educating people. We are doing a better job of providing uh, contraception. We are be doing a better job of providing options. And we are doing a better job of standing up against both the actions and the shit arguments of the religious right that are trying to outlaw a woman's right to choose. That's, that's their thing all day long. No, 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 we're against a woman's right to choose. Well, first of all, pregnancy is more complicated than that. But second of all, this isn't about what you feel is immoral or what you think, because when you start to, oh, this is about responsibility. No, it's not. Because for many people, Having an abortion is the most responsible thing. And for many people, abortion is merely health care. Now, if you are fine with it up to a point, then you need to go and figure out where that point is, why you're drawing the line there, and what you think should be done as a matter of law, but not with regard to what you think should be done as a matter of morality, because we don't legislate morality. You can think someone. Right. is immoral all day long for having an abortion essentially as um uh, uh as a way of of, of pre you know preventing pregnancy or ending a pregnancy if that's their their replacement for contraception you can think they're immoral all day long but the only question is should they be legally allowed to do it and we allow everyone to have freedoms until we have a compelling reason to deny that freedom I don't know what the compelling reason is to say you're pregnant and we are going to force you to stay that way. It doesn't matter to me how careless they were. It doesn't matter to me whether their religion, you know, matches my views or any of those things. What justification could we possibly have for saying you're pregnant? You don't want to be, we're going to force you to remain pregnant anyway, because I don't know if you're aware of this, but pregnancy permanently changes a person's body. Carrying a child to term carries massive risk, even though we've reduced it and pregnancy is generally um, much less risky than it ever has been, but abortion is also incredibly safe. But this issue of when, when do you say no, we've battled that. And with Roe v. Wade, we had kind of a line, although that's been completely overturned. At what point are you comfortable 
looking at a pregnant person and saying, I'm not you, I'm not a doctor, but I am willing to force you through my vote and through my actions to carry that child to term, no matter what it does to your body, no matter how it changes you permanently, no matter what kind of life that child might have, set aside all those factors, I'm willing to force you to stay pregnant. What's your justification? Okay, I would like to just draw a quick distinction. I'm not, I'm not saying I want a law to force people to carry it to term, but I'm saying instead of terminating the pregnancy um, and killing whatever is inside it, um, instead of just like, if it is able to survive, based with scientific help outside of the mother at that point, instead of killing it, I think that should be the action. So instead of, of an abortion taking no place... No one cares. If that's what um, you think a person's is, individual choice should be but doesn't have a legal ramification, then go go with Christ, my dude. No one cares. Go away. Nobody gives a shit what your opinion is. It's irrelevant. We're trying to figure out what the law should be, and you're like, oh, I don't think there should be a law to force people to carry to term, but I think there should be a law to force them to um, allow it to live. Okay, you don't know a fucking thing about abortion. You haven't bothered to do any research. You don't know any of the facts and figures on it. You don't know at what rate these things are doing. You've bought into some stuff and you're like, oh, I just think that they should have to keep it. Nobody gives a shit what you think, Caleb. Caleb, how many viable aborted fetuses are there each year? I, I could look it up. No, 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 surely, right? surely, you know, right? You called in because this is a problem. Look it up. You've a, you have an opinion on this. You don't need to look it up. Tell me the, the data that you have to hold this opinion. How many? You don't know, do you? What percent occur in the first 12 weeks? How many weeks? abortions happen past 23 weeks? Yes, how many? Without Googling it, I can hear your typing. Nice try. Goodbye. Well, I don't, I don't know. I how was, would I know? Exactly. You that was the known. point. You called about this and you called with your to opinion. Me, to memorize the fact. 88% of abortions occur within the first 12 weeks. 88%. You had an opinion you, based on figures you don't know. Based on a problem you don't know if it exists. 1.3% of all abortions take place after the 21st week. 1.3%. How come you don't know this okay. shit? You, you, you're, you're someone who will never be pregnant and who will never be the doctor of somebody who's pregnant, and yet you have all kinds of opinions that are completely uninformed. Go. Inform oh, your sorry, opinions I, better. I, I used to no, think no, that every word. version was wrong at no, every point. I no. muted them. Go and make better decisions. Do better research. You called into a call-in show to express your opinion about abortion. You don't get to say, I'm sorry, I didn't do my research before I called in. You should have. Do your research before you form a fucking opinion. The, the, the fact that, I'll say it with them on, but I have no intention of unmuting you. So you can hang out before or after. The fact that you thought you could have a conversation like this, that you were going to Google the numbers live to make your argument after, as in you picked your side first, and then we're going to Google what works for you. I hope at least you internally acknowledge that whatever your opinion is, it isn't the opinion of somebody who has exercised skepticism. Goodbye. I think Caleb should not be allowed to have sex with um, <laughs> anyone who can get pregnant. How's that for a law? By because law. we can't we can't trust Caleb's decision making process because Caleb makes decisions without knowing or understanding the realities of the subject. He just goes by you know what he feels, what he's heard. He's heard there's an issue of responsibility. He's heard all that stuff. Uh, he, he doesn't know. It just seems like this is a problem. He wants to hold people responsible. Well, let's hold you responsible, Caleb. Um, you are now forbidden from having sex at all <laughs> with anyone who could possibly, possibly get pregnant. Yeah. I, if I could go back in time, I would ask the question, should a person who decides to have sex because they want to have an abortion be prohibited from having an abortion? That was, that's a question I wish I'd asked, I realized just now.
Well, you may get a chance because we got somebody else who wants to talk about abortion if you're ready. Yeah, for sure. Let's do it. Sweet. Giorgio in Florida. Pronouns are EM. Giorgio thinks that abortion law should be left to each state and the term abortion becomes ugly. Why should abortion laws be left to each state? Why should, if we're the United States, why should my rights be different in Florida and Texas than they are in New York and California? Georgia, get out of the wind. Right? What the fuck? What, what is happening with your mic right now? I don't want to talk. Are you aware that you're on the phone? Did you literally put the phone down somewhere? Giorgio, are you there? Do you hear me? I dropped me? the call. Good. I enough. dropped the call. Fuck that shit. Yeah. Um, so here's the thing. We'll, we'll just go ahead and take Giorgio's issue. Um, just the two of us. Um, because we may have some slight differences here. I'm not completely sure. I think Jimmy and I have talked about this before. I don't give a fuck about states' rights, and I'm pretty sure that for 95% of things, states' rights shouldn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, only, the only extent to which I could say I'm glad state representatives show up is that just like I like diversity in science because we didn't realize what we were missing because in theory you should be able to go, but science is science. You don't, It doesn't matter who's doing it as long as they're holding to science. And it turns out those unique perspectives are extremely useful and that there are people who come in and go, here are things you have blinders to. Uh, so, yes, I do broadly agree. Uh, I, yeah, I, but as far as the – what was the thi- what was their assertion that – Abortion term- should be left up to the states is no. what it is. And no. so when you're in that situation – what that means is that Texas, which is huge, could ban abortion. Do you know that it takes, if I want to drive from Austin to El Paso, um, well, I drove that in a Geo Metro in the, in the 90s in August, and it took almost nine hours. I think you could probably do it in maybe seven and a half or so now with the increased speed on the interstate. But that's a long time. Yeah, that's to get and that's from Austin, which is already a few hours. If you were to try to drive all the way across Texas, that's a good 10 hour drive. Yeah. Now, what if the nearest um, abortion facility, abortion service provider, abortion health care provider is an eight hour drive from where you live? And that place has a waiting period as if it were, you know, a gun. And you're poor. Yeah. The reason that you don't want to carry this child term is because you're about to be evicted. You don't have any money. You can't afford to feed yourself. You can't afford prenatal vitamins. You can't afford the basics of healthcare. What if th- that's the situation you're in? And now somebody's saying, well, if you're in Texas or Missouri or wherever else, you need to pack up, drive, get a hotel room, schedule an appointment, be told you have to come back. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I get it. I... I went after some people today, earlier today, for failing to show empathy. Um, There was some young woman who got out of college or whatever and um, just basically said, was was posted a video of them crying about how difficult it is to work an eight hour day, nine to five, when they they can't live in the same area where they work, so they've got an hour commute. And so now their eight hour day turns into a 10 hour day. And it's like, when do you have time for these other things? When do you have other times for your life? Um, In the late 19th century, Colonel Ingersoll gave a a speech or wrote a paper called um, Eight Hours Must Come. Um, I think that was it. We worked to make sure that we weren't overworking people. And in the process of this, we went and did some research on, hey, at what point does the workday become so long that it's now counterproductive? Because you get people who are there for eight hours, but they might only do four or five hours of work. And if you increase their 
commute, won't they just find more time at work to do the things that aren't work? Um, doesn't work become their socializing as well? There's a lot of issues. And when you want to try and simplify things and say, oh, you just need to, Dawkins did this while we were sitting on stage. He was asked about safe spaces at universities. And his answer was that you just need to put your big boy and big girl panties on. Um, that there shouldn't be safe spaces at the university. And my answer was a little different in that I like there being safe spaces at universities and other places. I don't think the university should turn itself into a safe space where there's right. not critical examination of thoughts, where your, your ideas aren't challenged, where you don't learn. But the notion that you should not be accosted on your university campus, that you should be able to walk from your dorm room to class without being called names or preached at or you know harassed all these other things the fact that there should be some place that you can go where you are safe from that i'm completely in favor of that yeah. dawkins ironically in a safe space when he says that because it's an event with terms there would have been limitations to what a person could have done uh, uh accosting him even just verbally at that event before that person would have been taken away like it's it's ironic for people to advocate for uh against things that they actually benefit from. Not to say that obviously he's willing to have his his uh beliefs challenged, though it seems like he's been really trying to keep it safe on certain beliefs he wants to maintain lately. You're not seeing him going and challenging those those controversial beliefs of him in any places that aren't monumentally sympathetic. Uh but yeah, there's just some irony to me, for me there. We got, we got a lot more callers. You ready for more? Yeah, let's do it. All right. This, this one, um, I'm confused on. So before I take this call, Marco, we're coming to you next. And before I put you on, this is going to be Marco from the Netherlands is a theist, but the call screening thing says the fairy tale of scientific proof and an alternative theology had a dream that gods told him to tell the world there are no gods why shouldn't i take that as truth there are gods uh, you said to tell the world that there are no gods it says to tell the world that there oh, are gods yeah i'll dream that gods tell them the world that there are gods thank you um i'm gonna put you on but when you say the fairy tale of scientific proof i don't know what you mean because science doesn't include the concept of proof Science builds models and theories that are the best tentative explanations for observations. Proof is generally a mathematical concept, but I don't know what you mean by the fairy tale of scientific proof. So, Marco well, from Netherlands, he no, no, welcome. What do you mean hi, by scientific hi, fairy tale of scientific proof? Huh? What do you mean by the fairy tale of scientific proof? Well, now what I mean by that. I'm uh, writing a lot about uh, theism and atheism on a Dutch forum, Quora, it's called. And That's not what I asked. Many times when, yeah, many times when I talk about, uh, I'm not a Christian or all of that kind of nonsense. I'm a, an alternative theo theology, theology. I have an alternative theology, but I almost, almost every time I, 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 I'm pausing you. I'm, I've muted you. I don't need your history. I don't need to know where you're writing stuff. I didn't ask about your theology yet. I literally just asked the one question, what do you mean by the fairy tale of scientific proof? That's what also, I want to know first. Also, no, move your that, mic that, further that, away. That, hang on, hang on. But the fairy hang tale, on, hang on. What? Move your mic further away from your face because you are clipping like crazy. It's coming in way oversensitive. So move it away move and then answer further Matt's further. question. What do you mean by the fairy tale of scientific proof? Here we go. With Many times when I talk with atheists about uh, the gods and all that kind of stuff, they tell me they don't believe because there is no proof of the gods. They can't, God cannot be proven to exist. That's what I mean. But there, they can't, God can't be proven. So why, should, shall it, why is that important if they can't be proven uh, anyway? You know what I mean? God can't be no. proven scientifically to exist. Or, or can they? No. I have my own theory how they can even how they maybe can make contact with our world by means of uh, hidden variables of the quantum theory. But even if that's so, you can always say it's just coincidence that uh, 
for example, if you make a, a quantum spin measurement of an electron, stop. they can. Stop. They can. Stop. I, 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 stop. Sorry? Stop talking. Listen, I want to know what you oh. mean by the fairy tale of scientific proof. No, it's a fairy tale because uh, no, the, the, the scientific proof is not a fairy tale. But when it's um, when scientific proof is asked in connection with theism, then it's a fairy tale because there is no scientific uh, proof for for gods. And many times Whose when atheists, uh, hey, Marco, what? Marco, if if yeah. gods, if gods cannot be demonstrated yeah. to be re listen don't say yes listen 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 and don't fucking interrupt <laughs> okay yeah 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 okay i listen if yes goodbye <clears throat> i have a story I real quick uh yep. i attend so i go on to um vr quite a bit as Matt knows, I, I love VR. Virtual reality is one of my favorite things. I wish there was a platform for it now. I think it will con it, that will be a thing, but I wish I could be producing content in VR. Actually, funny enough, recently ordered a v virtual reality camera, and that will be something that I think will be a part of the future of things I do produce in the future. But I go into VR a lot, and one of the apps I go into is called Big Screen, and it's basically a place where you go. It's like going to a virtual movie theater, but there are also all of these groups and all of these gatherings. And there are often rooms that are for atheists and for theists to debate. Uh, and I sometimes open one. In fact, if you ever go on there and you see a room called Godless Gathering, that's probably my room. Uh, uh, you know, you can always look and see if it says Jimmy Snow's in there. Uh, you know, people are welcome. I love that place. I love that. I went to a room called the Atheist Garden. It's a room that I very much like because the people there are good. They're usually very progressive. And then theists will show up and often want to argue. And at that time, a couple of theists showed up and uh, started to talk about their defense of God more at the level of deism, even though one of them was a Christian, the other was a deist, and started to say the words quantum. And I expressed this. I said, whenever I hear a theist say quantum, my experience is that they don't know what they're talking about and that because it is an obscure thing that you can try to pretend means anything could happen and everything can be everything, that they can hide in there because it is such a broad concept, or not a broad concept, because it's such an obscure, a, a, a difficult concept, a complicated concept, that you can pretend the evidence is there, especially if you use words like what if. So I had engaged with these people and I had said that, and they both got extremely angry that I said that. So while I was in this conversation with these people who are defending quantum stuff, I said, they said, go look it up, go research what I just said. Quantum field can exist outside of time and space, which turns out to not be true, by the way. But anyway, quantum field can exist outside of time and space. Look it up. And I said, not only will I look it up, I will ask an actual physicist who understands quantum stuff. And then I said, not only am I going to do that, I now am texting that physicist. I am going to book that physicist on a show. And next week, you can call them and you can talk to the actual physicist who understands quantum uh, physics as in as much as can now be understood, who is a respected PhD in the field, who writes the books and stuff on it, and happens to moonlight as a biblical scholar. A great guy. And I'll tell you what happened. They agreed that they would call. And do you know who didn't call? Either of them. So what did I do? I booked him again for a week and a half later with Erica uh, Gutsick Gibbon. And I told, went and found them, told them again. And they once again did not call. So I'm going to now inform the caller who just called. Uh, first of all, work on your, uh, uh, how you talk uh, to us and, and your dismissiveness and the over interruptions. But next week on Wednesday, on the 1st, that very physicist, Dr. Aaron Adair, will be on this show with Matt. And if you want to be the person to, uh, to offer your alternative theology on the basis of if you look at the quantum state of spinning, and then I think we cut it because you were uh, uh, going off topic, you can talk to an actual physicist who actually understands the topic matter that you're trying to pretend your, it supports your way, even though 
physics uh, physicists have not gone and come and said, ah, this is where the proof of God is. Also, I would like to encourage that caller whose name I've already forgotten. Uh, if it can't be proven scientifically, how dare you use scientific defenses? But second, what type of proof can prove God exists and maybe present that next time? But that's my little yeah. VR story. The questions I was trying to get to, uh, and I have zero patience for the let me interject every other word. That shit's not going to fly. I'm going to try to put people on hold more so that it doesn't happen, but that will get you nowhere. If I make it very clear that I'm trying to formulate a very specific question to direct the call in a way that's productive for all of us, the best thing any of you can do is shut the fuck up and wait. Here's the question. If any God claim is unable to be properly investigated and verified by scientific methods, one is the fault with science or the claim. Two, how would you then verify it? So the question Jimmy got to essentially uh, it, it was, was the second half. This, the caller, and what we've heard many, many times before is the Oh, no, this is it. You guys want us to present scientific proof of gods, and that's just not possible. So you're asking for something that's not possible. I know that. I've known that for decades. But the point that you overlook is that until you're able to meet that burden of proof, you're not rationally justified in believing it. It's not the fault of science that your pet fucking idea isn't scientifically supported. It's not the fault of good epistemology that you can't present sound reasons and evidence for that. If we have a test that is designed to figure out how much you know about epistemology, and it's a multiple choice test, and you fail it, that's not the fault of the test. <clears throat> I wouldn't mind giving them also a test on the, uh, the quantum physics also, because I bet it also doesn't go well. Uh, I do want to point out that we are, look, this isn't important, and is what I'm about to say childish? Yes. But we are real close to 100,069. Just saying. It'll just hover. It'll go 68, 69, 70, 69, 70, 69, 68, 69, 70, 60. It'll just do that for ages. I'll anyway, enjoy got, every time it hits 69 again. Let's see. You're always born. Hey, we've got Raven in Costa Rica, pronouncer he, him. Welcome to the show, Raven. How are you? Uh, good evening, Jimmy. Good evening, uh, Matt. Uh, an honor uh, to be here. Congratulations on 100K. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Just wanted to come in and uh, answer the first question on this. Also, Trump going down? Yes, por favor, we, we need it. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys are aware of what happened in Brazil in the last few months. Yeah, I, a passing familiarity, but I, I, I'm not as in, uh, I don't know entrenched. Enough. Yeah. Okay, so let me just make it a uh, long story short. Uh, the tropical... Uh, Bolsonaro Trump, uh, he was the only Latin American president to support Trump on his claims about, you know, that so-called fraud election. And he said that the same people that um, stole the election for Trump were going to steal his election. October rolls in, he loses, and he does exactly the same thing Donald Trump did. Yeah. To such a degree that right now we have uh, one of his uh, supporters sentenced to 17 years to jail, and he's being accused of insurrection. So, in very short and concise point, yes, Trump has to go down because we're sick and tired of the trickle down, full bar issues that happen of the United States to us, to the rest of America. Uh, it's just, it's been what, 165 years, 200 years that it's been constant where we get the bad end of the deals <laughs> type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to go monologue, but man, look. 
No, we get it. Latin America has gone through so many, uh, so many Donald Trumps. You know, I, 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 you've heard me say before, Donald Trump is the United States, what Hugo Chavez was to Venezuela, what Fidel was to Cuba, what Ortega was to Nicaragua, and so on. But that's because we have the historical uh, baggage and heritage to be able to make that claim as Latin Americans in that sense. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, he has to go down, please. I mean, it, it just feels like suddenly when Trump said, oh, they stole my elections, all Latin America, you need uh, all those bad sides of Latin America turn around and said, oh, we're doing that again? Is that time again in history that we can claim that an election was stolen and then we start killing each other off? Is that time again of, of the of our history? Can we do that again? That's how it felt, you know. Um, so, I mean, I could go on for hours. I don't want to monologue. I want to present one question in this sense. Okay. Why do you think, as North Americans, United States is so behind? the experiences of other American countries, such as the rest of Latin America and, um, and, and the Caribbean. What, what, why what, what do, do you mean that, behind? that is happening? What, what do you mean behind? What, by behind, I refer to the political, social experiences that has happened internally in the United States are not isolated to the United States and have had mirages of of things happening within the rest of Latin America. Raven, Raven, no, that's not what he asked. Uh, we get that part. What do you mean? What what is what do you mean by behind? Not not does what the U.S. do end up shitting out on other countries and other countries follow? Which specific thing are you referring to? Like for me, I would reference the way that. Even the American left is right wing on the political scale, uh, uh, the the or or closer to moderate. If you get to the harder left, the progressive people, what is the specific thing you're saying we're behind the rest of the world on? Okay, so I don't want to get lost in translation. Um, let me choose my words carefully in English. I'm thinking in, in Spanish. So what I'm. It, when I say behind, I'm perhaps mistranslating an expression in Spanish. Que están quedándose atrás. That they are, we're leaving them behind in that sense. So what that expression is the inverse. It means that Latin America has been ahead of, um, of populists such as Donald Trump for a longer time than the United States has had the opportunity of experiencing. So my question was on that sense. Are you what, asking why we're going backwards? I think that might be what you're trying to say, Raven. Thank you. I was trying to get to that. I apologize. You can okay. understand. Yeah. Me. yeah, no, no. For clarity, when you, when you say, why is somebody behind? Um, in English, there's an implication like we're playing catch up. Like you guys are ahead of us and we're playing catch up when it seems like really it's more like a race to the bottom. Yeah. Uh, my hope of why we're going backwards, this is the best interpretation I have of it, and this is something that I think I got from Andrew Seidel. I hope the reason we're going backwards is that this is the death throes of Christian nationalism, that right before Christian nationalism is going to be done or not an issue or a heavily reduced issue, it's rearing its ugly head with the most energy it can to try and survive, literally death throes. I hope that that is why, that Christian fascist, that, why well, nationalism, same thing, fascism, uh, that Christian nationalism is about to die and this is its best attempt to try to stay alive. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear me? Oh, sorry. Yeah, we, we had a moment of, of time. Um, actually, very interesting. Um, I would add to your point that I also consider this the, the beginning of the death throes of bipartisan model of politics in the United States. Either you will be able to open your democracy for uh, 
political party pluralism, or you will end up like Venezuela. What happened to Venezuela? Or, you know, in that, in that way. And trust me, I can give you a whole historical reason as to why Venezuela ended up there, because I'm, I'm half Venezuelan. My father was Venezuelan. My mother is from Costa Rica. So. Raven, that's okay. You remember when he said you didn't want a monologue? <laughs> We, mm-hmm. I think I think we mostly agree, so we'll probably uh, move on here, Raven. But uh, uh, yeah, we we share in your, we both share in the the frustration with what is actively happening and lament the way that that gets exported. And clearly, Bolsonaro, even before this last election, was looking at Trump as somebody he should emulate, or was a person mm-hmm. already like Trump and saw that Trump's existence has shifted the Overton window, and now is the time that somebody like him can. Uh, uh, benefit from how terrible it is. And you see that happening with people all over the world and, and the rises of extremist parties that are realizing that you can start with a grassroots online community and grow into something gross and unfortunately effective uh, when voting. Uh, I think that's everything I have for you, Raven. Matt, did you have anything? Yeah. No. Cool. Last thoughts before we let you go, Raven. To say, yeah, if a, a quick wrap-up. Uh, first, big congratulations. Hopefully in the future, if you do more political programs or if you want to talk about the Latin American experience, uh, I could gladly be your help. Uh, and number two, for the case of the person who was speaking about abortion, look at the uh, Artavia, versus others, uh, Artavia and others versus Costa Rica in the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, the resolution regarding that. That's going to give you a heads up as to where the law should be. Cool. But I thank you again. Thanks, Congratulations Raven. to everyone. And Thanks. have a good one. Pura vida. You too. I hope the thing I said you too with, because I don't... Oh, shoot. What just happened? I dropped our call, I think. Or did you drop our call? I don't... I'll I think we it. both tried to click drop at the same time, and one of us dropped the call, and then one of us dropped... The other one, yeah. Okay, let me... The other one. I'm going to... Ready to... I'm going to mute that while it reconnects. Uh, so we don't have to listen to the robot for the next 25 seconds. Hey, thanks everybody again. Not only have we have gotten over a hundred thousand, we're c- getting close to, you know, a cool number would be to see 100 comma 100. That'd be neat to see before we go for the day. Uh, I'd enjoy it anyway. Uh, let me see if the robot is done. Robot is done. We can move on and I'm going to let the screener know only argumentative calls here from here forward. Cause yeah, we aren't going to go all night. For- the possibility i just sent you a message andrew may have availability in a while okay but not right now cool cool so let's just uh let's just crank through these because mark's been on hold for a freaking hour so mark uh in new hampshire pronouns are him welcome to the show you're on with matt and jimmy hey hey guys how are you doing congratulations on the 100k thank, thank you. you appreciate it go ahead mark so um, my my comments were just l- looking back at my childhood and growing up in a small rural New England town in Massachusetts, and we had two churches basically uh, in a town less than ten thousand people, one Catholic, one Protestant, right next to each other. Each one holds maybe two hundred and fifty people each, and every single time I went to church, it was never filled, and I always. I, not, not always, but I asked my parents, like, why were the churches never filled up? And I would just like your guys' insight on something like that. Well, first of all, that doesn't seem like very many churches for 10,000 people. Two churches for 10,000 people? But church attendance has been on the decline in the United States for quite a while now. And um, even, like, when I was growing up, um, you, you know, and I was in a pretty decent sized church. Um, you would have maybe a couple hundred people at most. And I lived in a rather large area. Yeah. Uh, Jared, I, I, I would say this one, we live in a world where independence is now more valued, even amongst people who claim to not want it. Right. Like people who are Christian fascists, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, are still representatives where if we were in her 
fascist utopia, people like her wouldn't be allowed to talk at church, let alone Congress. Uh, but uh, so because independence is valued more, people are allowed to be more of other things. Religion has become much and information is so um, ubiquitous. Religion has become more acceptably personal for people who want it to be. So the the anti um, organized religion movement is very large, even amongst religious people. But you don't even have to be anti to just be, I'd rather have my version of it. So even if you're going into a place where the churches themselves aren't filling up to the brim, it doesn't mean that you're in an area that isn't heavily sympathetic to those views. You could just be in an area that doesn't feel like they have to go be told what to believe or that they feel like they need to uh, maintain their religion. And, and different religions also preach it differently. You're going to have that less amongst Mormons since amongst Mormons, if you're not out, you really have to do a lot to be performatively in, or they will come and get you. They will come to your house and offer you rides 20 minutes before church on Sunday uh, offer with, you know, high pressure and indication. So uh, I really think yeah. it's, it's that simple. Yeah. Um, I, I've actually seen that in the, in the small town that I live in now here in New Hampshire, where they have these, uh, uh, evangelicals and other, you know, extreme religious come to your door and, and try and get you to go to church. And it's just, it's, it's really ridiculous to me. I, I just don't understand it at all. It's, it's, it seems like they just want money or, or something else. Well, okay. When I was, so this is be in the mid eighties when I was a teenager. Um, Monday was visitation. So every Sunday at service, you would have visitor cards that people could fill out and they would then, you, you then gather up those visitor cards. And on Monday you would divide up into groups of three, four people. And you would hand each of those groups visitor cards and you would go out and interact with the people who filled out the visitor card. Basically you're going to knock on their door to say, Hey, you were, you were here, you filled out the visitor card. We're just here to see, you know, uh, do you have a church home? Are you new to the area? You know, how can we help you? Things like that. So part of what you were doing was to see, was to respond. We didn't go knocking door to door in random neighborhoods. That's nothing we ever did. Um, but the only purpose was to grow the church. And the thing is, it's like, oh, they only want money. Well, n at no point was I ever interested in money or donations of money or, you know, and we never had money. It was about growing the church. If, if God has told you that you are supposed to work, allow the Holy Spirit to work through you in order to draw more people to Christ, that's what you do. You can say that they just want money and the church is corrupt and all this other stuff. And you could be right with regard to higher ups and all that stuff. But the average person sitting in the pew who goes out and goes door to door, they almost exclusively just love Jesus and want to introduce him to more people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I understand that. Um, hey, hey, I'd, I'd like to ask both of you guys, um, are, are you guys fans of Bill Maher? And if so, um, Bill Maher can I, I go fuck himself. Bill Maher is an anti-science idiot who can go fuck himself. Yeah. The, the only ways in which he isn't turning right wing is his religious views. The way he's now platforming people, most recently Candace Owens, to go like, but by the way, here are the anti-vax points of yours that I do agree with, all because he feels somewhat slighted by a left who he feels unwelcome by, uh, is just a he's, a, he's a whiny, antiquated bitch. Uh, and I, I, I hope that I, you, your use, any usefulness you see in him passes soon but i liked his you know, movie years no, ago i i understand i i definitely understand and i i i align with those points i i don't agree with everything he says but what he did say i believe it was probably two months ago is that atheist is the number one growing religion in the united states that would have been a very and stupid thing for him to say if that's the word phrases phrasing he used two two months ago so you're saying Two months ago, Bill Maher said an atheist is 
So first of all, the nuns, the N-O-N-E nuns, the no religious affiliation, have been the fastest growing religious identification for most of the last 20 years. So for Bill Maher to finally catch up and figure that out is uh, unimpressive. If he was saying religious category, and again, none isn't the same as atheist, that's fine. If he called atheism a religion, that's real stupid. No, no. What he was, what he said, and I can't, you know, I'm not exact on it, but he was saying basically in the 1970s, uh, something like 90% of the United States had a religious affiliation. And in 2022, it was vastly declined. It was, it was ridiculous, the, the, the decline of the religious affiliation in the United States. So, Mark, are you wanting to ask us if we see that as a point of hopefulness? Exactly. Not really, because I don't see anything that indicates that skepticism is rising. And in some ways, I worry that that's not happening. Uh, I see it. As, I have to agree I see with it as you cost based on today's Hang on, Jerry. Speaker. Let Matt answer, too. It's fine. It's fine. Now no one knows who should go. <laughs> Matt, do you want to go or have Jared go? I'm encouraged by the fact that the world is less religious than it was. I've been talking about it for 20 years. I'm glad some people are catching up, but I really am in agreement with Jimmy. The world needs to be more skeptical and not just lip service to skeptical. I had a, you know, I had an argument today on Twitter with someone who, who de described themselves in their Twitter bio as skeptic extraordinaire, and they're a garbage thinker. Yeah. Yeah. Though I, Matt told the story and I was sitting going, could I have designed an atheist bot to do this like a gpt i was like is, maybe it's a but uh uh yeah no i i uh you know what else is rising adherence to my favorite uh way it's been described birthday racism uh astrology is is on the rise wow matt uh matt one one final thing i'd like to just mention with you is is about brad paisley uh the screener told me not to mention it but i'm going to do it anyways I just want to okay. know if you've ever heard Brad in the Game of Thrones. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. How in the hell is that guy not in, in it? I mean, it's just ridiculous. All right, cool. <clears throat> <laughs> you shouldn't disobey the, the screeners. But <laughs> oh, yes, fine enough. Sure, I guess. I don't know. I don't. As soon as it was coming back to the guitar thing, I was like, I quit Twitter. So I'm a much sorry. more evolved human than everyone here. Just kidding. I'm sorry, guys. Why, why are you? Again, why are you? Congrats, anti congratulations on your hundred k, and I hope you guys do great. Oh, I had you up as Jared Thanks. that whole time. I'm sorry, Mark. Apparently, didn't update the thing. That was Mark, not Jared. Thank you so much, Mark. We'll see you. What you we should absolutely disobey the call screener. I don't know what, why, why are you so down on the guitar thing? It was, I brought it up specifically for a point that I thought was pretty oh, irrelevant. The and, point was great. And also, and, and also, if you haven't seen it, like, are you anti-music? I don't know. No, of course not. I just, uh, I was really worried that a big conversation about now, whether no. Brad Paisley belonged was about to happen again. The point itself so, I was on board with. This is something that everybody needs to watch. Granted, it's got 41 million views right now. I'm looking at it on YouTube. Um, Tom Morello from Rage Against the Machine, Scott Ian of Anthrax, Nuno Bittencourt of Extreme, Brad Paisley um, got together to play the Game of Thrones theme mm. in with their guitars and their various guitar styles and stuff and everything. It's, it's just, I mean, it's 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 the bomb. It's way up there. That does sound cool. I will say I, I recently made a uh, playlist for somebody and I realized that I think it's probably about 70, 80 songs long. And I was like 70% of this is music I was listening to when I was 16 years old. There's some amount of my teenage music that hasn't evolved at all. There's something I saw that, that was like your favorite music for your whole life will be whatever you were listening to at this age. And I'm like, that's absolutely not true. Not for it's, you. It's, yeah, for me, it's yeah. definitely not the case. Yeah, there's always outliers because there's also, I remember they did, um, I think it was a formal study, but it might have been a for fun study or like a fun thing for a magazine. But I think it might have been a formal study that showed that 
um, whoever was the cast of SNL when you were a freshman in high school or in college is what a person is most likely to say is the best cast. I don't know what the best cast is because I stopped watching after that. See, and whereas I'm I will sitting say, here going, Andy Samberg, what, well, I was a freshman in college. Jason Sudeikis, Kristen Wiig, Bill Hader. I will say that um, when, it, when it comes to Weekend Update, Michael Che and Colin Jost are the best of all time, and that's happening right fucking now. They're very, very good, that's for sure. Best of all, probably, yeah, probably. probably. All right, you ready for more? Oh, yeah, I'm always. We have uh, David calling from Australia. Thanks so much for waiting all this time. Pronouns are he, him. How you doing, David? Yeah, good, thank you. Good. How can we help? Um, yeah, look, so my question is, I've got, um, I've got family who are having disagreements and I've been placed in the middle of all of that. And it, coming from a Christian background, but I'm an atheist now, I struggle when, you know, people who are Christian don't follow those same tenets of their of their belief. And I know I know Matt that you had, you know, problems with your family and stuff like that. And I was just wondering, uh, how, how what can you do when you you feel like you're placed in the middle of all of that? What what are the disagreements about currently? The the disagreements they amount to, in my in my feeling, nothing. It's not like they are, you know, sexual abuse or it's it's minor stuff. It's like oh you didn't remember their birthday or oh you you didn't um, you know they they invited you on a holiday and then you didn't interact with them on the holiday or it's stuff that that i wouldn't elevate to the level of you know they they are now at the point where they they cannot talk to each other at all sorry um, i missed something are, are are we being asked gen like how to generally like general conflict resolution well sort of but it, it's so so it's my brother and his wife they are christian or they go to church and i would expect them i suppose to follow those those tenets of christianity but they don't you dave, know like dave, forgiving dave, people or, you know dave okay david i think you need to talk to somebody who is an expert on comfort conflict resolution and not ask i guess what i think you're and by the way i'm hearing my audio echo back for some reason so if we're on speaker, please take us off. Are we on speaker? Because I'm about to mute you, if not. Um, yeah. All right. Please take us off speaker. Because, yeah, we don't want to hear the echo back. Uh, I think you need to talk to somebody who is some type of expert on... Okay, I'm muting you because you're apparently not turning it off. Uh, uh, some sort of expert on conflict resolution. Not At best, it seems like you're asking us how can I point out that they're being a hypocrite in a way that they will internalize as Christians who are supposed to adhere to certain morals, but also I'm not actually a Christian, so I only want to point out that they're being a hypocrite according to their morals, but not according to mine's, but I would still like the same resolution. None of this is useful. If, if, you're, if the purpose of your call today is uh, how do I resolve conflicts with people who have different core beliefs, but those core beliefs aren't part of the conflict. Like when someone is mad, you didn't spend enough time with them on vacation. Um, without being overly mean or rude, I don't know why you thought this was the platform to ask that question. Matt, if you have some other ideas, go for it. But otherwise, I, I think I got nothing. Well, first of all, look at seculartherapy.org. Um, as a potential source to find somebody counseling wise, but if you, it, I'm trying to make sure I understand your issue and it is, there seems to be bickering going on in your family and you seem to be frustrated that some of the people who are bickering are Christian, but they're not acting like they're Christian. 
Yeah. Yeah, then it doesn't matter whether or not they're Christian or anything else. You, you deal with people about how they act. What you think, how you think a Christian should act is irrelevant. Um, whether or not they're hypocrites or not are, is irrelevant, and it's irrelevant to solving the issue. You, you need to deal with them um, for whatever they are doing and are saying, not what you think they ought to, or how can you do this, you know, you're supposed to be a Christian. Whatever. First of all, Christians are people. They're, they're shitty about all kinds of things. There's conflicts in every family. I, all throughout my family, the, the conflicts aren't Christian versus atheist. They're Christian versus Christian because they're people, because Christianity doesn't do anything. Christianity doesn't make people better people. It doesn't do any help if people deal with situations um, in, in any substantive way. So whether or not they're Christians is relevant. You need to find somebody who's good at conflict resolution, um, as Jimmy was pointing out. Okay, thanks for that. Thanks, David. Yep. The other thing you might consider, not, not, and this is not just for David, just for anybody, is um, let it go. It's, I'm not trying to be glib, I'm not trying to, you know, quote Frozen or whatever, but unless you, so first of all, you trying to fix stuff could also be part of the problem. It could also make the problem worse. So for example, um, if there's a conflict between me and somebody else in my family, it's not my brother's job to fix that. I know my brother would, you know, if I, if I reached out to him, he'd definitely come and he'd talk to me and he'd listen to me and he'd help whenever he could. Um, absolutely. He would do all that because he's just awesome. Um, but it's not his job. And so if nobody's asked you to fix this, maybe staying out of it is the right move. Yeah. I don't know. Cause I don't know all the details, but yeah, it's fig figuring out if you should do anything is probably step one. Yeah, I I just, there's something about it where it sounded like we were talking about pretty petty conflicts and I I don't know. And when uh, people sometimes express to me like, yeah, I was disappointed that I only got to spend with that type of, con and I usually just go like, okay, hey, well, it's going to happen again because you and I don't have the same type of way our brains work. And if you don't expressly tell me when things are happening that you don't like what's happening, I'm not going to pick up on it. And also I'm not really sorry is how those combos go. So I'm not the conflict, general conflict resolution guys. Guess what I'm saying? Um, oh, I'm going to take this, Jimmy. Uh, hey, yeah. Orami. Hello. It, it says here that, so in chat, you said I made a bad argument. And so I told you to, to call in and tell me what the bad argument is, but here paraphrased it, you're suggesting that I made the argument that somebody um, who can't have an abortion shouldn't have an opinion. I've never made that argument at all. Right, so the call screener was having, we were having some difficulty expressing uh, exactly what uh, sure. wanted to be, what, what I was wanted the bad to have written on there. What was the bad argument? So, well, could you, so one thing that you said was you you asked the question to the caller. You said, "Are you ever going to be pregnant?" And he said, "No." Then you said, "Are you yep. ever going to be a doctor who delivers a pregnancy?" He said, "No." Yep. And so, without misrepresenting your position, what then was your what you're about to do? Your, well, what was your conclusion uh, based upon his his answers of no? I wasn't, I didn't reach a conclusion. I asked two questions to specifically gauge who I was talking to and what position they were likely to be in. At no point did I then, or have I ever suggested that nobody outside of that should have an opinion. As a matter of fact, I've repeatedly expressed exactly the opposite as I did when I debated this because I went through all the potential optics of having yet another cishet male dude defending this or offering up his opinion on this. I have wholeheartedly, repeatedly, vocally rejected the notion that when people are like, oh, if you don't have a womb, you should shut up about abortion. That's a stupid line of argument. I've repeatedly rejected it. So, but when did I make a bad argument? So whenever you, you ask the question, whenever you ask those questions, I think your follow-up was something along the lines of why then 
should anybody care about what you yep. think about this topic? Something along those lines. Yep. And and I don't and think it's wrong relevant asking, whether or not somebody what's has what's, what's 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 fucking wrong with asking that question. Because I don't think that it's relevant whether or not somebody you're will wrong. Deliver you're a baby wrong, Arami. or whether or not you're somebody wrong. is going you're to be wrong. pregnant. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Listen to me. I ask questions for very important reasons, because despite what you think, I actually know what the fuck I'm doing. My reason for asking that question, why should anybody care about your opinion, was to see where that person is, because there are very good questions. And the, the, other, the, the answers to that questions that could have come up are, because I'm a human being, because I have friends and family that I care about, because I have mothers, because I have sisters, because I have wives, because I have daughters, because I contribute to society. There are all sorts of answers that would have been viable. Just because I ask a question that you think is leading to something doesn't mean that's where I'm going. Okay, fair enough. Cool. Don't tell me I made a bad argument when the bad argument exists entirely in your head. I know what the fuck I'm doing. If I make a bad argument, by all means, call in and correct it. Yeah. If I've made a bad argument, absolutely correct it. But if you just think I was about to make a bad argument, or if you think a question that I asked could be used for a bad argument, that's all happening inside your head. I don't need to battle straw men. We had a caller who clearly did not understand this. And so I asked some specific questions to see if he's got any sort of answer like that. If he's got any sort of answer. Not every question I ask is going where you guys think it is. I I also, just generally, this is not that I'm a person to give everybody life advice, but I can tell you that in my personal life, and it, this almost combines the last two calls, honestly, uh, my life has been affected very much by the fact that people will assume on the basis of what they think they would mean if they said certain words in certain order, or what they think I would mean based on what other people have said or meant when they put certain words in certain order, that I must have the same intentions as their, what their instinct would be. Uh, and not only have I been frustrated by that being projected on me, it's been frustrating knowing growing up that my brain is, you know, I use very negative terms privately to describe it, but we'll just call it different uh, than a neurotypical person's brain. And that I knew growing up, I wasn't allowed to do it in return, that I could not expect people to think like me. I couldn't expect them to have the intentions I would have or to value the things that I would value. Uh, you cannot do that to people. And when you do, it usually makes you look like an asshole. Like in this scenario where, uh, um, yeah, hang on. I, I, I don't want to go quite go that far because here's the thing. If you pipe up in chat and you say, I made a bad argument, cool. Call in and tell me what the bad argument is. But in this case, I hadn't made a bad argument. I had asked questions that are also, see, one of the things that, that people don't maybe realize and Okay, it's because I don't go through and explain what the hell I'm thinking all the time. But I've done this for 20 fucking years. I debate for a living. It's my job. And sometimes, don't tell anybody, sometimes I lay traps for people. Sometimes I ask specific questions to see what kind of answer I get. Because if they're giving a really bad argument, all of a sudden, now I know that not only do they not have a good argument for this, but they don't even fucking understand the issue. When yeah. I called somebody out on Twitter today and was like, hey, you, you say Jesus didn't exist. How would you demonstrate that? And they said, it proves itself. That lets me know they are not an honest interlocutor. They don't care about this. Sometimes when I ask a question, I'm genuinely trying to figure out where somebody is. Sometimes when I ask a question, I'm seeing if they're stupid enough to fall into a trap because most of them don't have a good enough understanding. And in the case of Caleb, Caleb hadn't bothered to do any research on this, hadn't thought about it. And I wanted him, I wanted him to say, wait, are you saying that I shouldn't have an opinion? But he didn't because he didn't even know enough to recognize that. Yeah. Don't assume that I'm going to say something that you think is wrong. Wait till I actually said it. 
Sometimes. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, as I just say, the point I'm making isn't necessarily about saying don't challenge, don't, uh, you know, don't assume that you're wrong either. It's the way in which you're going to engage that. The people I uh, genuinely value the most in the world are the people who don't go, when you said this, you meant, you really meant such and such. It's the people who go, when you said this, did you mean such and such? The people who ask instead of a sign. And that last caller could have done that. Hey, I heard you say this, which to me flags as you saying this. Is that what you meant? Instead of starting with you were wrong for do meaning that, uh, that would have made the call go from, in my mind, uh, uh, more empathetic, more actually trying to engage with an actual human being, more actually trying to uh, find the answer instead of confirm your own worldview and perception of other people. Is but also my point to be as fair as possible to that person. I completely understand why you thought, "Oh my God, Matt's about to make a bad argument." I get that. It, it, it is nothing that he did that wasn't natural. It was he's thinking in the same lines as everybody else. He's like, "Oh my God, don't say that." I've been I'm so tired. And sometimes when I would say something like that, it's because I want them to challenge it specifically so that I can make the point. Yeah to stop saying, if you don't have a womb, you don't get an opinion. That's not how it works. That is, that is absolutely not how it works. I don't have a womb, so I don't get to decide for somebody else. But the fact that I don't have a womb doesn't mean that I don't have an opinion. And in many cases, not only do I have an opinion, I have an informed opinion, and I have a better informed opinion than some of the people who actually have a womb. That's a great point to actually make. Yeah. It doesn't mean I get to decide for somebody else. But I, they're absolutely, as a human being participating in this human experiment, you should have positions. And I vote. The th this is the disappointing thing about Caleb is that um, when we said, why should anybody care about your opinion? He gave up. Yeah. And the answer to that question, by the way, is people should care about my opinion because I'm going to vote. And if you want me to vote in a way that's consistent with what you're, we're saying, you need to actually convince me because right now I'm in this position. But Caleb couldn't even do the basic homework. Yeah. It'd be funny. I haven't paid attention to if every time we hang up a call, if within 15 seconds, the number goes down. <laughs> I don't know, though. <laughs> We're making them all mad. They're pulling out. Uh, I have a make, preference make of the two call. calls, but no, I, I haven't been paying attention if after a call, after we have a heated call, if after we hang up, if the number goes down by one subscriber. Oh, it yeah. could be. Yeah. Would have been funny to notice, but more of a existential funny thought. Uh, so anyway, Arami, thanks for the opportunity to uh, correct what some other people might have been thinking as well. Okay, th this is this is inter this is very interesting. Uh, Tim in is it Minnesota? Yep. Hey, pronouns are he, him. Thank you so much for calling. It seems that you you want to say that humanism practitioners live in contradiction. So welcome to the show. How, how are we in contradiction? Real quick, Tim, it sounds like you're driving, yeah. are you? Uh, yeah, I can pull over, though. You need to pull over. We, don't, we won't uh, take the call if you're actively driving. Okay. You have like 20 seconds. All right. We'll, I can... we'll, we'll mute you for yeah. 20 seconds and then come back. Yeah, we'll get right back. I, um, I'm just going to explain that to the, or you can, if you had something to say first, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I'm just going to explain to the audience, look, I talk on the phone while I drive. I'm not going to pretend I don't. However, that is a level of distracted driving. I don't know whether or not other people are as capable of doing it as I am. I think that I can do it safely. I also have a car that can correct me if I, but those corrections don't come up often. Uh, so we absolutely do not. I can't know that Tim or anybody else that that amount of distracted driving isn't the difference between whether they live or die if an accident happens. Uh, so just for the record, for anybody who's call, thinking of calling in the future, we absolutely will never take a call if we can tell that a person is driving. However, if you are able to conveniently pull over, as Tim seems to be doing, uh, that's fine. Uh, did you have something before we unmute, Tim? Nope. Yep. Good. Yeah. Tim. Yeah, I'm back. Thanks for pulling over. Yep. Uh, so basically the premise of my question is, uh, in the fact that I, I look at, at, you know, everybody's belief system at a certain level, 
contradicts itself from what I can kind of tell. And I can't really seem to find an exception to, to this. Um, whether that's, you know, um, in, in the form of theism with many theists who are literalists, who can't accept um, some of the, the tough passages in the Old Testament about slavery and things, or, you know, even many humanists who, for example, uh, they might be enjoying their cell phones, but then at a certain level in the production chain of that cell phone, there is unfair labor practices, uh, in many cases, uh, child labor, um, economic uh, you know, displacement of, of peoples and, and abuse and, and things of that nature. There's you know, tax dollars that go to the causes that are that directly are antithetical to humanistic values. So how do you, you know, accept those realities um, within your worldview? So you work to make the world the best you can, and you do the best you can to make sure that you're not living in conflict. Now, I, I like my cell phone, but I have problems with a number of different things. And so I work to impose legislation, sanctions, stuff like that. But, you know, it's what, else, what are the other options? So in every situation, it's about triage. It's about trying to make sure that we are maximizing um, the, the good uh, as best we can. I, 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 that I, don't, I, I would agree that there is no perfect system, um, even, for example, the Janes who wear a gauze mask so that they don't accidentally inhale an insect. They, they don't want to hurt any living thing ever. But that itself hurts people. And so recognizing that there not only is no perfect system, but I don't see any way where there could possibly be a perfect system, then the goal of perfection is something you know you're never going to reach, but by aiming for it, you should be constantly improving. Okay, so then here would be my kind of follow-up question. The goal of many, the I would argue, essentially all theists would be to, you know, worship um, the creator that they believe in. And if that's their goal and they think that worship of God is the best, most possibly moral thing that they can do, even if they're actually wrong, they don't know that they're wrong. So then are they doing something that is, I guess, like immoral in holding that belief? Because if they haven't been convinced, for example, that their God is, is incorrect and they're moving towards um, following the tenets of that belief system, and they would say that their goal like you just said, your goal is to try to do what you can to, um, you know, make the world a better place and, and things. If that's their goal, then what, how could you, I guess, attack their, their, their character or, or say that they're, um, attack their intentions, I guess. Because if my goal is to make the world a better place and their goal is to worship God, our goals aren't necessarily in alignment not only do they have no reason so you, you kind of try to, to shift the burden of proof there so they have no reason to think that their goal is a good goal they have no reason to think that their god is it exists or that that goal is in the best interest of any of us yeah i think what it breaks down to is you're asking a question of how do you justify uh the moral system you adhere to over the moral system that the other people adhere to uh, and yes. it's often very easy considering the moral system I adhere to allows them to have the freedom to adhere to theirs, whereas theirs yeah. seems to restrict other people's. Uh, who, it's it's quite like living in the U to? it's quite like living in the US where you have people advocating for a theocratic government, but only with the hopes that it's their theocratic government. They don't want any other one. And they don't and so a lot of people have actually recognized, even who are religious. Uh, that theocratic governments are worse for religious people. And in fact, the best type of government for religious people is a secular government. And so if a person can figure out that what seems like a contradiction, that I should vote for a secular government because I'm religious, I don't think it's difficult to also figure out other things like my own personal beliefs and desire to worship and stuff exists better in a world where uh, I don't say that it is acceptable for people to put those limitations on other people. Okay. 
so so a couple things. Um, when it comes to the things that, you, like in your within your worldview, that you found that you find you know abhorrent or detestable, um, and then when it comes to the things that you maybe don't speak on, what what determines the difference there? Because you know you could t- you could point out the the issues in people who are trying to get a theocratic government. There's lots of theists who might want a secular government, but would want to pursue in their own personal Tim, lives. Tim, 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 Tim. Sorry, yeah. You, yeah. you're now ex- offering examples when your question was so weird. There is nothing to which I won't speak to. I can't force anybody else to believe what I believe, but I can defend mm-hmm. why I believe what I believe against somebody with a contradictory belief. I can defend why for both of our benefit or for humanity's benefit, or if you just want to go with why secular humanism would be better than uh, some sort of religious philosophy or whatever, but I can't force anyone to take it on. I can only advocate that for my opinions and hope that as a result of that advocation, it becomes more popular and then will become adopted by society but I'm not even advocating for me to become king of the world and do what's best for everybody, whether they like it or not. I participate in a democratic system because despite being imperfect and being actually terrible, the things that are terrible, more terrible is everything else. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think you addressed kind of my, my thoughts on that. So I cool. can take the, the rest of it off air. Appreciate you guys. No, I've, if you got more, Matt, did you have anything else? Well, yeah. Um, one of the things is I'd recommend going back and watching some of the debates that I've done where it is Christianity versus secular humanism or secular humanism versus something else. And how do you go about determining which worldview is better? Because I've answered this question over and over again. And as I've done recently in the last debate, something that Jimmy just pointed out as well is that um, my worldview allows for other worldviews as well. And that's, mm. you know, I mean, the, the, at the end of the day, if okay. you and I both, if you and I both want to make the world a better place, it should be pretty yeah. straightforward for us to have a conversation about what we mean by better. And if by better, I mean, I want less poverty. I want better health. I want, um, uh, less war. If we, if I, if those just like number one, two, and three. And your answer is you want people to be more godly and you want people to not have gay marriage. Um, well, clearly we don't even have the same idea about what a better world looks like. So instead of, of, of having a conversation about how to get to a better world, we need to have a conversation about what a better world looks like. I would hope that most people would find at least, let's say two things that we both agree are a better world. Um, mm. And why couldn't we work together on those two things? And for the areas where we disagree, we just keep to ourselves. Like you get to worship whatever God you want and I get to fuck whoever I want that's willing to consent to that type of thing. And so we just don't yeah. worry about those things. Just Let's focus on the things that we agree on. Could, could we at least agree that we'd like for the war in Gaza to stop and the one by the way, uh, in Ukraine as well. If, if we can at least agree on that, can't we set other stuff aside and work on that? Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that, and that's kind of where, where I'm at with it when it comes to different worldviews. Um, but I find it, I find it interesting because it, less so now, but more so in the, you know, the past few years with the pandemic and everything, there were so many people who were on, you know, people I know and love and care about who are on opposite sides of, you know, different issues on precautions and things who had the goal. I think their hearts were in the right place, but their, their methods were a lot different. And I've oftentimes found contradictions from people on different sides of the political spectrum and the, you know, religious, you know, aisles and, and so on and so forth. Um, and so, so yeah, I just was curious, um, whatever there, you know, is maybe a contradiction at some point, how that's handled from a secular humanist perspective, but 
sounds like yeah. you guys are saying you can't strive for perfection, but don't let the good be the enemy of the perfect, basically. Um, don't and let the always be the enemy of the good. Yeah, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. I, not to pump my own stuff, but if you Google the superiority of secular morality, it's a talk that I gave. It's online. You don't have to listen to the whole thing. Near, I use chess as an analogy, but I also talk about how you can construct a moral system with very simple beginnings by things like saying life is generally preferable to death, health is generally preferable to sickness, pleasure is generally preferable to pain. But you have to include the generally there because there may come some point where death is preferable to life. If my quality of life is so bad, death may be preferable to life in in a you know in a specific circumstance. And so I go through there. Mm-hmm how you build it up. But the key thing that I talk about that's where I think secular morality is superior is that religions, um, when they come in conflict, there's no problem with secular morality that has ever been solved by appealing to any religion. Religion can't solve the problem. If, you know, if I point to my God and you point to your God and Jimmy points to his God, well, we're stuck. And so that's why religions change minds by conversion and coercion and conquest. But what secular humanism is advocating for changing people's minds is by data, debate, and I forgot what the third D was, but we'll just say dick because it's funny. Uh, yeah. But in any case, the um, methods by oh, which we try to change mind are different. Uh, maybe this, this last point, if you guys don't mind addressing it. Um, so me and a, a friend of mine, we currently work in a religious institution. Um, and we're kind of going through a journey where we're going from heavy on the, the theistic track to, you know, agnostic and leaning towards atheism. But the, the, the thing is like, it would very much so uproot, you know, lots of things financially and otherwise for that to be made public. But um, it's also like a guilty thing of like, you know, I, I, I look at sermons and, and things and stuff differently, and I'll hear stories about, you know, when, when Abraham brought Isaac up and almost killed him and how that was like this test of faith. And I'll be like, um, <laughs> you know, but I, I also have to like bite my tongue. So I don't know. I find that as like my own personal, like living in contradiction, but like, which I, I wouldn't, I'm, I feel kind of stuck. So I don't know. What do you, what's your guys take on that? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to do, do something I've done 20 times before. Um, and that is just on the specific story about, um, the binding of Isaac. If in fact God is opposed to child sacrifice, then when God went to Abraham and said, kill your son, if that was a test for Abraham, the only right answer was, I don't know who you are, but God would never ask that. So go away. That's the only right answer. And the fact that God supposedly went to Abraham and said, kill your son, and Abraham was rewarded for being willing to do what God said means that Abraham was rewarded for correctly concluding that God would demand child sacrifice, which tells us that God intentionally rewarded an understanding about God's character that God is in favor or would be in favor of child sacrifice. That's the part of the story that, I mean, not, there's another part of the story that nobody really gets, which is what was this like for Isaac? Um, oh, yeah. But none of it happened. It's just a story. But even with it, or as far as I know, it didn't happen in just a story. But even with the story, the key is it gives an undeniable message that God absolutely could, under the right circumstances, demand that someone kill their child. And that means that when Andrea Yates, killed her kids if she did it because she thought god wanted her to how can you ever say she's wrong and now you have no way this is one of the reasons why like the catholic church and others were opposed to suicide there's so many little loopholes in what is morally permissible when you don't have a clear structure you know when you have something as simple as thou shalt not kill except 
you can kill these people and these people and these people. And the penalty for virtually everything in the Old Testament is death. You pick up sticks on the Sabbath, it's death. You touch the Ark of the Covenant, it's death. If you have sex with another man, it's death. If you are an unruly child, it's death. Um, really? Oh, I hadn't heard a couple of those, but... Hmm. Yeah, if, if, if you have a, a child that is a drunkard and is unruly and is disrespectful to its parents, you're to take them before the town elders and say, our child is a drunkard and unruly, and the town stones them to death. The penalty hmm. for being raped and not crying out loud enough is death. The hmm. Bible advocates oh, death for nearly everything. It's it's appalling. But yeah, Tim, if 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 I could meet your challenge a little bit with a question, is it sounds like you're saying that you're starting to develop a list of things that you go, ooh, this might be a bad reason to believe. This thing that yep. I used to believe in is I'm starting to collect quite a list of bad reasons to believe. What's left on your list of good reasons to believe? <laughs> so so I would say the what's left is um, the fact that it's what I know. It's all the people that I know. Um, not all the people, but it's the majority of the people I know. And um, it's, you know, Politically speaking, I am, you know, center right leaning, uh, not a big fan of Trump, but also not, you know, on the quote unquote woke side of things. One step at and a it time. Let's stick like, to the religion side for the moment. Well, well yeah, but I'm just saying like, yeah. just socially speaking, like, you know, I, I would essentially like ostracize myself from like everybody. Um, if I, I feel like if I were to, Tim, Which, if, and then if if you met the, if you met somebody ahead. who had a belief that was bad, uh, let's go yeah. with something that that. So right now you don't know necessarily whether or not it's bad to be an atheist. It sounds like as far as if 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 you would have bad reasoning, but like let's go with Islam. Let's go with a. Uh, are, are are you pretty confident that Islam is untrue and and it's bad to believe in Islam? Um. Yeah. Okay. So how yeah. would you feel talking to a Muslim if you said to the Muslim, hey, what's keeping you Muslim? What's keeping you there? And they said to you, it's, that's my people. That's the people I know, and it's the people I'm around. Would you feel like that's a bit of a tragedy? Or would you just go like, yeah, man, all right, cool, good. Keep on keeping on. Well, I, I kinda, it goes kind of the, to the heart of what I was asking initially, which is that I feel like we all... Um, hold inconsistent beliefs. I, I I understand that I'm currently living. Tim, I get that it, with I, inconsistent beliefs. No, no, no I so get that. I guess I, that would be I, my I response. That. Yeah, if you just come back would, to the question, would you feel like that was a tragedy to find out that somebody was having to live that way out of not because they actually believe for good reason, but because they're afraid of what they would oh, lose? Well, what I think it was a tragedy. I don't. I don't know. Just a bad I, thing. I you don't have to. It, I don't know what your relationship with the word tragedy is. Did, what would you? Would it? Would it make you a little sad at the very least to hear somebody go? I can't really entertain it because I'll lose everything. Sure. Yeah. And I want you to know that that's how I feel when I hear you and anybody else say it. I, 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 it wasn't a trick question. I wasn't trying to pull you into something. I'm just trying to tell you when I hear people express that, I understand it because I did lose everything. I lost my community. I lost uh, a career path that I was planning to go on. My friends uh, would pay lip service to, no, we're still friends, but our fr the dynamic of our friendships completely changed. I definitely lost my family for leaving religion. And yet I still sit here and go, I'd rather be free and myself and believe because I have good reasons to believe than have all of those things back and continue to live in a world of what I now see as delusion and, and people uh, convincing me to do harm to other people in the name of good. And so on my end, I can't speak to it. I don't know. I don't know exactly what your is going to happen to you, Tim. If you go, I'm going to let the final straws break. I'm going to let the, or the camel's back break. I'm going to, I'm going to let it finally happen. Um, maybe it's worse for you. There are people in this world who could call us and, and I could say, it's my experience is it's worth leaving. And then they leave 
and they get murdered for it. Those people exist. Tim, you're in America. I doubt that's what's going to happen, but they exist. Yeah. I can't speak to your thing, but it sounds like you already know that you don't have a good reason to believe. And that really right now, the reason you're sticking into it is fear. And I can tell you there's a lot of people that are like that and a lot of people who live in the closet because they don't want to lose it. So my last piece of advice before uh, just, I guess, giving it back to Matt, sorry I'm if I'm sort of uh, uh, taking all the time, is recoveringfromreligion.org might already be something you should engage in. Even if you're not ready to leave religion, to listen and talk to people and potentially attend group meeting, uh, like, like kind of group activities, sometimes they're over Zoom or whatever, or just hear from people and their stories of, yep, I, a lot of people at Recovering From Religion are non-religious or they have lost their belief or even just a significant part of their belief and they reach out to Recovering From Religion because they need a community that is different than the community that is uh, making them hold on to those beliefs and needing advice and all of that, all of that sort of thing. And so that's the last bit I had. Hmm. Um, me, oh, me go ahead. Jump in real quick, Tim. Um, what you've said a couple times is that, hey, all of us have a, 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 a belief system, a model that's, that's somewhere in, in, in conflict or in contradiction. Nobody's perfect. And that's true. Cool. Nobody's perfect. But being better should always be the goal. And it's not about quantity. It's about quality. What if somebody had a worldview that was perfectly consistent, no conflict, the only problem was that they believed they could kill anybody that they don't like? It's mm. obviously that's worse than someone who's got 10 things wrong with them, but they're all relatively minor and don't have the same impact as I'm just going to kill yeah. anybody I don't like. And so for me, yeah. I can't be a Christian, it can't be a Muslim uh, under any normative sense, because what they advocate for is not in keeping with anything close to what I see as the best ways to make the world better. Because one of the things about Christianity and Islam is that their focus is not this life, it's the next life. And if your focus isn't this life, I don't know what, what, why you think they're not you, but I'm saying if your, if your system's yeah. focus is not this life, I don't know how you could ever argue that you're going to make this life better. And that's what I want to do. I don't give a shit about the next life until somebody demonstrates that it exists and what I need to do to get it. For now, I'm focusing on the life I got. So, um, so from a practical standpoint, right? Because like I said, my, my career, life, family, everything is, you know, tied up into, uh, I don't want to get into details and specifics, but it, it, it's very entrenched. Um, and so I feel like for me personally, like there's, I, there's no like immediate change that could be made without directly probably causing a lot of harm to others that I work with and help and, you know, to my family economically and so on. So yeah, then don't. I guess, okay. If you're, if you're, by the way, you don't have to answer this. I'm not asking a question. If you happen to actually be in the ministry, there's something you should look up and it's called the clergy project. It exists because there are many people who are members of the clergy who no longer believe or are having doubts or can't really, um, continue in the ministry in the same way they have. But now they're stuck because these people, some have been ministers for decades. And what yeah. do you do when your entire career is wrapped up in this? And it's, you, you've got everything, music ministers, youth ministers, everything. The Clergy Project provides an anonymous forum for those individuals to interact with each other, to talk about the difficulties they're having. Um, and so you don't have to say anything um, if, you happen to be uh, qualifying, by all means, check out the clergy project. And if not, cool. At least I told it, I mentioned it on the show to somebody who might uh, need it elsewhere. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, you guys take care. Cool. Thanks so much. Thanks, Tim. Yep. All right. That was a cool call. Hey, 
we got more calls, but also I was going to see if you had announcements that you might want to make and inform yeah. people of. Uh, yeah, here are the announcements. We hit 100,000 subscribers. Sorry, I'm going to keep bringing that up. That's cool, and I feel very, I don't know, I never got affection from my dad, so this will fill that hole. Uh, that's a joke. Don't, nobody psychoanalyze me. Uh, I mean, it's true, but it's also a joke. Uh, th there are amazing programs on this network, and there will be amazing programs on uh, this network's extended network. The extended cinematic universe of the line, the LCU -E EU, if you will. Uh, but this week, I bet I can do all of this off at of the top of my head. This week, we have amazing things like tomorrow, the Transatlantic Call In Show will be featuring the wonderful and amazing Art and Heart. Uh, I bet Matt would have like 30 more positive adjectives. Uh, but Arden is, is also my sort of second in command and the person I rely on the most to keep, maintain my own sanity here at the network. So I also have many positive adjectives, uh, and she will be joined by the illustrious Luxander, uh, which, uh, Arden and Luxander are always a hell of a team. I'm looking forward to that show very much. Uh, this Sunday, Matt and I will be returning for the Sunday show. Uh, Monday will be... Shannon Q and Paula Gia on Skeptalk. Tuesday will be Dave Warnock and TBD. I don't know if we actually filled that hole yet. I hope I'm not forgetting somebody. Oh, it's me because it's Halloween. I'm doing it because it's Halloween. I do holiday. I always put myself on the holiday shows. So Dave and I will be holding down the house on Halloween. I would expect that show to go early because I actually live in a neighborhood with tons of trick-or-treaters. And uh, I don't know. I kind of enjoy participating in that style of thing. So uh, we probably do it earlier in the day so that uh, I don't miss the trick-or-treater. Uh, and also just to not get my house egged and or tissue papered. And then Matt will be back for the hang-up with Dr. Aaron Adair, who I really like. I have I know that I've been expressing that a lot lately, but uh, man, I just, I, I like anybody who can be so good at something like physics, which is way beyond me, but can explain it to me. Me. Jimmy Snow, known moron. Uh, I, I, I'm really, really fond of that. So um, anyway, uh, those are the announcements. Also, uh, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash call the line. I would suggest that you go there if you would want to not miss. We're going to do some sort of Zoom event before this month is over. We have two Zoom events, one with the either all or at least part of the transatlantic crew in uh, uh, November, as well as Forrest Valkai on the 12th. Uh, and... I'm thinking we're probably going to have some exclusive content regarding hitting over 100,000 featuring all of the different hosts. Uh, just something short and fun and sweet uh, that that will be exclusive for patrons. So uh, if you want to check all that out, patreon.com slash call the line. And then finally, a reminder that it is Super Chats of $10 and above that are read on this show. But because I like PhD Tony, I will put your uh, yours in the queue. That's all I got. Cool. We got, uh, got a handful of callers left. Um, first of all, I, we're always going to give priority to theists. However, there, there are a couple of, I say always, there's a couple of odd exceptions. So Joseph, will get to you shortly, but Drew's been on hold for an hour and 40 minutes or so. So Drew in Illinois, Pranza, he, him, um, wants advice. So welcome. I'm Ann Landers and, uh, I'm here with dear Abby. So I was going to say Dr. Drew, but he went nuts. <laughs> uh, hey guys, how you doing? Just fine. All right. How are you, Drew? Uh, all right, big fan. First off, been watching you guys for like a year or so. <laughs> uh, cool. So basically, my best friend of like five years now is like one of those really, really, really preachy guys. You know what I mean? Uh, Maybe. And he's the kind that. He's the kind of guy that uh, always finds a way, no matter what you're talking about, to bring it back to religion. He's always preaching, trying to convert, and all that shit. And I've tried to explain to him how I feel about it, but he's he sounds like a lot of the people that call you guys, uh, if I'm being honest, which drives me nuts because he's not dumb. <laughs> but basically, like, I'm scared that if I'm too blunt about it, he's not going to want to hang out with me anymore. And he's like a really good fucking friend of mine. And all the advice I've been getting from other people online is, well, he's not your friend. You should drop him. Don't hang with him. 
and I don't want that. You know what I mean? I just want to figure out how to get him to, like, leave that subject alone. Okay. You're not going to like this at all. Oh, no. <laughs> so, he's your, one of your, he's your best friend, and you've told him that you'd like him to stop preaching, right? Correct. Like you've actually been clear about that. Yeah, I've gone to the point where I have brought a Bible to what we work together. I brought a Bible to work to show him different passages on backing up why I don't think it's good material. And he still just, he gets that. Okay. Like now I'm confused. Now, now I'm confused. Do you want to engage him in debate or do you want him to stop preaching? Well, see, I engaged in debate early on until I saw it wasn't going anywhere, and then I stopped, and I'm just like, dude, can we change the subject? Okay. Dude, can we change subjects is not telling someone to stop preaching. Have you told him to stop preaching? Not in those exact words, no. Then tell him in those exact words, and until you tell him in those exact words, you're not going to get any response. And if you do tell him in those exact words and he continues to preach, he's not your friend because he doesn't care about you enough to respect your boundaries. Okay. Yeah, I get that. It, it absolutely sucks. It is ab it's awful. Nobody wants to lose a best friend, but you have got to be able to say, hey, here's what my boundaries are. Please respect them and then hold people to actually respecting them. Okay. Well, I don't, I, I don't want to take up too much of y'all's time. I know you get priority to see us, so. I just want to talk okay. to you about that, and I'm going to take that and let you guys get on with the awesome show, I guess. <laughs> yep, thanks, Drew. It's going to be the same answer. You got it. You have to communicate in every relationship. doesn't matter if it's a romantic relationship, a friend relationship. You got to communicate. And if you have a boundary, you may have to be you, and should be very explicit. I've engaged on this subject before. I don't want to engage on it anymore. Please respect that boundary. And if they can't, then as much as it sucks, that that relationship may need to end or be on pause or whatever. But it it sucks and it hurts, but I don't have any better advice. Yeah. I agree. Uh, well. Thanks, Drew. I I hope I hope you find a way to keep your friend and and be comfortable with it yeah I, I really do but thanks a lot i am really disappointed because i was actually going to ask if i could solo uh, or just start a call if i could uh, uh take there was a person on uh the line i think their name was ray who is calling to argue against arguing and told our call screener that arguing just puts walls up and you shouldn't and there's no point in arguing and I was looking forward to that because I was going to tell them that I disagree and I think that they're wrong and that their reasoning is wrong. And then I wasn't going to allow them to talk at all because anything they would have said in response would have been an argument. And so I wasn't yep. going to let them argue back because arguing's pointless. I think arguing has value and I will argue on behalf of the proposition. You don't. And so you are not allowed. I wish. Th anyway. That's it. Uh Oh, it's like the Monty Python sketch about I came in here for an argument. No, you didn't. <laughs> you're not arguing. Yes, I am. No, you're not. You're just being kind of canarian. No, I'm not. <laughs> All right. Uh, Joseph in, ooh, is it Massachusetts? I think it's Maine. Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, you're right. Yeah, Maine is M-E. So. You're right. Hey, Joseph, welcome to the show. <laughs> he, him. What do you got for yeah, us? Yeah, uh, hey. Matt, I think you do a fantastic job. I'm sort of a moderate Catholic, but I have a couple of questions I want to ask you in your debate with Trent Horn, all right? Okay, let me start okay. by saying this. Let me Hang on, let me start by saying this. I do not remember my debate with Trent Horn. 
Well, I, I do. So I can clue you okay. in on it. All right? Cool. Here's the question I have with him. Unlike most Catholics, when he talks about the Old Testament, he seems to think that the genocide of the, of the Canaanites was divinely inspired. And the other thing is he keeps talking about God has a right to do whatever he wants with people, so you can't criticize the death penalties of the Old Testament, which I find absolutely absurd. I've never heard uh, uh, people talk like that within the Catholic Church that are moderately intelligent. I mean, I expect that from fundamentalists. But if his answer to all the injustices and the atrocities is God can do whatever he wants, what the hell good of a God is that? He might as well be Mussolini or Hitler. By arbitrary definition, because he creates something or they believe it, then he can do what he wants. How does that differentiate the God of the Bible from Allah or Chemosh of the Canaanites? Okay? Any question? Any any uh, answers to that? Well, um, you seem to be objecting that God doesn't work the way you want him to, and that's not relevant. Well, I, I'm objecting to the fact is not that he only doesn't go what I want, but it would seem that any any just morality, I mean, look at the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. I mean, if God can do whatever he wants, he's no better than, and according to these people, he's no better than Satan. The fact is the fact that he created or allegedly created us give him a right to murder us. All right? Um, That's my question. That, so I would say um, that... Rights don't apply to God in the model. It's not that God has the right to kill us. It's that there's nothing you can do to stop it. You can object all you want, but God can wipe out all of existence. Um, it's the Bill Cosby model of, I brought you into this world, I can take you out. It is right, a very simplistic right. might makes right based thing. That, whether yeah. or not God can do that is separate from whether or not God should do that, which is also separate from whether or not God works the way we we think that he should, or that you think he should, or that I think he should. And so right. you can say, if that God exists, then he's definitely not good um, by by my standard of good or by yours or you know whatever we're going to agree on is uh, right. is wearing that, that standard of good. But if you have objections to Trent Horn's model of God, you need to take that up with Trent, because I don't have a model of God. Well, uh, what I'm saying is I have never, I mean, I've done a lot of reading on Catholic uh, discussions of the Old Testament. Most of them would accept the fact that uh, this genocide either never really occurred like that, or it was a creation of people of that time, and there were other nations of that era. In other words, they don't regard it as divinely inspired. And as far as the death penalties of the Old Testament, they they pale into insignificance comparing to the modern constitutional codes that we have. All right? I mean, it's barbaric. From our point of view, I, how all, I mean, if God doesn't, if God is just pure will and does whatever he wants, he's no better than any other of these deities that they criticize. Okay. All right? So, so I've heard, granted, I grew up Protestant, um, and I've debated a lot of people, including Catholics and Orthodox and other stuff, I've heard this line of, of reasoning um, that, you know, yeah, God, God's genocide is just because he's spiriting them off to the <laughs> afterlife, and God is by definition always just. But so, Joseph, if you and I um, agree that the God of the Bible is a dick if he's actually doing what the Bible says he's doing. Um, I agree. <laughs> why, why on earth do you still believe has God offered you anything at all to think that he doesn't work that way? Well, the God that I grew up with, and I was in Catholic schools and Catholic theology, highly different from that. He's supposed to, he's a God of justice, a God of nature, a God that cares about human beings, yeah, and a God that is not any, autocratic. No, no, no. At least that's what any, I was taught. Okay, that's the All God right? you were taught. This God that they pretend, and, and not only that, on. uh, if hang you on. study the history of criminology, hang of penology. On. Hang on. Okay, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. you. I, I don't care what God you were taught growing up. I care what God is real. 
if you don't have any way to demonstrate that the God you were taught is real, and Trent doesn't have a way to demonstrate that the God he believes in is real, why should I give a fuck about either one of them? Oh, I, I, this, isn't a, this isn't a critique of you. I, this is a critique of what he's saying, because if you take that, it's going to lead to autocracy, barbarism, and dictatorship. In other words, God and the way these people envision him, whether it's real or not, that's the, we're dealing with people who control society. They make him out to be a dick. They make him out to be a dictator. He's no better than Stalin or Mussolini. All right? That's what, when I tell I them that, they, 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 they tell me I'm not a cop. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, congratulations. You support a criminal organization, but you're one of the good people who support the criminal organization. Um, well, I don't support I don't everything care. they do, believe me. Well, you're a Catholic, <laughs> right? Well, I'm Catholic in that I love the liturgy. I, I, when you put me in, when you put me in the Orthodox the liturgy Catholic. or the Tridentine liturgy, I'm almost transfixed into another dimension. Whether that's my you, own or not, I, I love that. But all the other stuff about Catholic morality Catholic. and all that, I find it barbaric. Do you, do you donate to the Catholic Church? Yeah. That's true. And then you're but I also donate to humanist organizations. Do you tell people? Do you tell people that you're Catholic? Then you're supporting. Well, I tell them that I'm a moderate Catholic. All right. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck, Joseph. You are telling people you're Catholic and you're donating to the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is a criminal organization. You have no good reason to believe that your God is any more real than the Trent Horn one. So you calling in to tell me how Trent believes in a God that might as well be Mussolini, I don't give a fuck because you're both supporting in word, money, and deed the same church. Well, they might tell me I'm a heretic, you know. They might tell me I'm really not a Catholic. I've heard that too, you know. They might, but as long as you're giving them money, you're no better than them. You really think so, huh? <laughs> Yes, I well, really do. Well, I've never heard that no, no, before. No, 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 no. Uh, hang, on, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. You may be better than them in some regards, but you're still supporting them. It's like the people who are like, oh, I'm going to vote for Trump. I don't hate the gays. I don't hate the trans folks, but I'm going to vote for Trump and help let them take their rights away. Okay. You, you, well, you may I'll, not be I'll, the I'll, worst I'll, person ever. All right, let me, let, me, let me put it to you this way. Trent Horn thinks homosexuality is immoral. Well, if he thinks homosexuality is immoral, and he thinks God's revealed that in the Old Testament, why doesn't he support the death penalty for it? The way some of these crackpots... Ask the Pope are. that. Joseph, huh? why are you asking me shit about Trent Horn? I don't even remember my debate Because you with debated him. him, and I thought you would have asked him that shit. question. Take it up with Trent Horn. Why doesn't the Pope... Well, I write him. Joseph. I, uh, Joseph, well, I write him. Why? I send him books on wait, this. Wait, I never get an answer from him. I never get an answer. I've fine, asked him to fine, give me an answer. Okay, he stop. never gives me Joseph. an answer. Joseph, stop yelling. Maybe you don't stop fucking talking long enough for him to give you an answer. Joseph, you just said if, if Trent Horn believes that homosexuality is immoral because of the Old Testament, why doesn't he believe that they should be executed? And my question right. to you is... If the Pope believes homosexuality is immoral, why doesn't he believe they should be executed? Well, because he would say that the Old Testament is a, is a dispensation that's been eradicated by the coming of okay, Christ. Okay, so maybe that's what... And that Trent a lot Horn... of the things they wait, didn't, wait, wait, they were Joseph, Joseph, only Joseph, for that time Joseph, and don't stop. apply to the Fine. Catholic people today. Fine, That's Joseph. what he said about much of it. So why would you ask us a question that you know there is an answer for? Your question doesn't stand alone as, therefore, you would have to. So you know that some people have an answer, but why would you ask two people who aren't Trent Horn what his is? Well, no, I was just interested in your opinion of what he had said. Actually, didn't even ask because me. Because sometimes I, I, I question my own reaction to the guy or okay. to people who disagree with me. See? And you guys were completely on the other side. And you gave good. I mean, I have to admire uh, Matt. He comes up with some excellent questions. Right, that's right. We don't, I've we don't need to struggle you to, with this hey, all my you. life about best, how God is cruel best, to human beings the, and why we have best, suffering and the all the these. Best, Jesus fucking Christ. Now you're muted. I got the best question for you ever. I do. Why do accent. you buy into the bullshit from the Pope that says what happened in the Old Testament 
no longer applies. Why, here's the question, why did it ever apply? Why did it ever apply? Why did it apply? ever apply? Well, you know, you know, I don't have an answer to that, Matt. And I, and yeah. I would agree, you've got, the better, you've got the better point. A lot of it to me is bullshit. All right, good. That's the answer. You want me to come out? I mean, I don't say that. No, 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 no. Stop. You answer the question, and I I just have to cut you off because you go for a long time after each one. By the way, I walked away to take a pee earlier. I came back, and you were still on the same point. Like, that's how long you take on these points. But but I hear your Boston accent, and I can hear my New York accent trying to start to make its way back out. That's what I want to meet you with. Uh, I love it. I, I, I love your voice. We'll start with that. Second, I don't know whether or not because I also walked downstairs to let my dog out to pee. I don't know whether or not the two of you already addressed this. But, but right. Joseph, hang well, on, listen, hang on, I hang on, Joseph. No, 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 I have I a mean, question. You're doing a good Joseph, job. I have to Joseph, admit that. Joseph, stop. I have a question. I just want to ask this question. I don't know whether Matt already did or not. You have an interpretation of the Bible that you think is the right version of Catholicism for you. Trent Horn has an interpretation that's the right one for him. What makes yours better than his? Did you already do this? It Nope. Well, the only the only the only thing that would make it is not necessarily a corresponds to what the original writer said, but at least I can see the flaws in what he wrote, just like I can see the flaws in Islam right. or Buddhism or what, anything else. What is the mechanism by which you see the flaws that Trent misses? How are you? What is it that that you're doing that makes your interpretation better, and Trent's worse? Well, because I accept scholarship, and he seems to reject it on certain areas as to how the book came about. I don't believe it you was don't. dropped down from you heaven. Don't. That's a superstition. You don't. you don't. You're lying to yourself. You don't accept scholarship. You just told me what the Pope said, and you have no good answer to why it ever applied. There is no scholarship. There is no demonstration of expertise anywhere in theology. Theology is not scholarship. It's about, hey, theology is fan fiction. Theology is cosplay. Theology is not yeah. scholarship. I've heard that before, Matt. So, Matt, you don't yeah. think any of these theological uh, dissertations that these people give, with all their nice language, has any real substantive meaning? Hello? Yeah, we're here. Hello. Here, okay. Yeah. Joseph, instead, I'm going to go with the conclusion of the thing I was talking about here, uh, the, the reason I was asking you the questions. You have expressed basically that you sit and you internalize and you think about what other people have written about it and you have aligned with what you think it works, basically, and that what right, you think yeah. is right. Cool. So does Trent Horn. You are as bad yeah, as I a, agree. No, 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 yeah. no. Stop. Stop. Hang on. Let me finish before you jump in. Your right. reasons for believing are not as good as his. They are as bad as his. <laughs> and you need to evaluate right. why you believe it all in the first place and if those good reasons are good, or if those reasons are good. I submit well, they you, are not. you know, you want an answer to that? Sure. There were questions. I, I mean, there's certain things like death, it's going to eventually come. What if they're right and I'm wrong? Then what the hell am I going to do? What That's if, what's what if somebody wrong. else is right who's going to kill you? What if another God that is good, that would kill you and torture you for being Christian is right? Oh, yeah. No, you got a you good live point. Your day, I, 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 you live every day against a million Pascal's wagers, but you like the one that's pos popular in Boston. <laughs> well, that's a good point. I agree with you. No I, I mean, I, uh, but as I say, what happened to me when I read all this stuff, was a, it was like a revelation. And I ordinarily in church at Mass or in these services, you never get that aspect of the cruelty of the Old Testament. They keep it quiet. You're no, they never tell you that. Ma you're not they, telling us, you're not telling us anything that's, that question, Paul? none of this is insightful right? to why you believe. The fact that you've had tremendous experiences outside of church that changed your view of church, you sound so much like my father, almost accent and all, he's got a New York accent, but at least it's from the region, who, <laughs> when I asked my dad, how could he ever know whether or not his religion is true is false to the point or no the question was between him and I I'm an atheist and he's a mormon what would it take yeah. for him to realize I was right and he was wrong and he said god would have to show up and tell him 
In other words, he said, God would have to show up and tell me he doesn't exist, and then I would believe he doesn't exist, which is wow. a paradox. You sound like wow. him. You don't think about, you don't actually consider the possibility. It's all wrong. You've got the thing that you started with, and you don't want to leave from that. It could be tradition. It could be because it's what your dad told you. I don't know what the source is, and I don't really care what it is. Right. You've got the thing that yeah. you're engraved in. You've got a sunken cost. And now, as you're trying to examine where it is, you're not trying to figure out where you fit with belief, where you fit with theism, where you fit with religion in ger general. You're just trying to figure out what kind of Catholic you are. And you don't realize there's so many other options. And I hope that oh. one day you start considering the options that don't protect pedophiles by systemically to this day. Well, I mean, the thing is that I admire you took on someone that I would be, you know, somewhat hesitant. You, you remember that guy, Stephen Anderson? Now, looking at a guy like that, the guy scares me. If there were a lot of people like him, can you imagine what a society we would have? The guy wants to kill anybody that disagrees with him. I, I get it. I, I had to move because of the violent threats I was getting from his congregation. So I don't understand. Really? I don't, I don't actually you, understand. Really? Yes, that's why I moved back when I. Uh, well, these in my people are criminals. Days. Why did they allow this man to function? Yeah. For the uh, same but, reason they allow the Catholic criminal fucking exactly. church to keep going and you keep supporting them. Exactly. Don't pretend like you've got a fucking moral high ground here, Joseph. You don't. I don't even understand no, why you a, switched well, yeah, to this but, topic. I mean, do you see any Catholics coming after you and threatening your life? I don't see no, that. No, Joseph, I'll tell you this what I see. This guy threatens people's I'll, lives. I'll you, no, he didn't. It was, it was members of his congregation. But, Joseph, I'll tell you what I see, what kind of Catholics I see. I'm seeing a Catholic right now who just got put into a very uncomfortable corner that would have required introspection and instead tried to compliment and relate to his way out of even keeping his brain there. You just did what is a cult-like thought-stopping technique where you radically change the subject to take your brain away from the actual task at hand, which was the acknowledgement that the reasons you believe are dog shit. And I, that is all I have left to say to you, Joseph. Matt, you're welcome <laughs> well, to... Well, I don't quite agree with that, I but know I mean, you don't agree. it's too bad you're being as... I'm, I'm muting you now. Uh, Matt, did you have anything left for him? No. Uh, other than thanks for calling, Joseph. I yeah. like you. Um, I, I find I find your um, alter alteration between um, honestly answering and obviously honestly obfuscating um, bizarre. Yeah. And uh, uh, I don't know how somebody. Can, oh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how you can keep believing and and. Well, I'm not going to defend the church, and maybe they say I'm a heretic. Just own it. Just own it. Yeah. But Joseph, I hope this isn't the last time I ever hear your accent, but that's it for today. Have a good one. Cheers, bud. Uh, All right. Whoops. I almost did it again. Did, <laughs> did we both click drop at the same time? Uh, we probably did, but we're good. We're on the... All right, we got a couple right calls track. left, and... Uh, Darius in California pronouns that he had been waiting for an hour. Or so, uh, and, and, oh my gosh, it's addressed to me, something about chat GPT. So, Hey Darius, yeah. what's up? Hey, what's happening? It's, it's, uh, it's an honor to talk to you. Thank you so much for taking my call and congratulations on a hundred thousand uh, subscribers. Thank you. Um, I, I want to make sure I heard you say something about chat GPT. Um, and I've, that's not the first time I've heard you say it. And I want to make sure that I'm understanding what the point is first before um, I make any assertion about it. Um, did 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 you say something? It was something about you can't understand the dynamics of water or something like that. But but the general thing that I got from it was that you can't use Chat GPT to understand complex uh, uh, complex concepts or something. No, you Is can't query really? Chat GPT for them. What's that? If you don't understand a subject, and you go and ask chat gpt to explain it to you there's no confidence uh -huh. that you're going to get an explanation that is accurate cool um if you do it that way you're a noob um, so what there is a way oh you my can god do did it. you call it? hello so yeah here listen very carefully darius someone was in my twitch stream today 
having a conversation with me and they weren't grasping mm -hmm. what I was explaining to them. And so they took some time. I told them to go do some research. They took a few minutes and they came back and they started defining terms and getting it correctly and then got something uh -huh. very wrong. And when I pointed out that it was wrong, their answer was, well, that's what chat GPT told me. Did you seriously call in just to call them a noob? No, um, I, I was wanted to make sure that I understood your point correctly, which is why I asked you, is that what you were saying? Um, and the it only literally reason says here from the call screener, it says from the call What's screener, that? Matt, anybody that can't use chat GPT to understand complex concepts is a noob and will be left in the dust. That's what you told yeah. the call screener. That seems to be the Correct. purpose of your call. Also, I so when I asked you if you called in to call that person a noob and you said, no, that doesn't seem honest. I also happen uh, to disagree you, with the well, point at large. I was, I was wondering if that was your position. That's why, that's why I asked for clarification. I wasn't, I wasn't calling, I didn't even know who you were responding to. So I wasn't calling anybody a noob. Well, you, I didn't know the context you, behind it. That's why, why I did, was asking the why did the stuff. screener get the word noob from you? And before you were told that, you said the word noob on this call if you aren't calling anybody mm -hmm. a noob. I said, if you fit that category, if you don't know how to get ChatGPT to get information for you, then you're a noob. Okay. Goodbye, so, noob. so you are no. calling people. Okay. No. Goodbye, I'm noob. not going to call anybody a noob, except for a huge group of people. Mad leet, yo. Just weird. All right. Final feel... call for today, unless the theist calls in while we're on the phone with him. But James yeah. in Mississippi, I believe it is, oh, runs or he him. Welcome. Uh, Cookies Hello. told you to call or get banned. You're pro Trump and Marjorie Taylor Green. So I... uh, welcome. Before Your we favorite. do, hang on, hang on. I I I do want to say because I know I was a part of it. I don't want someone to be on the line because they feel they are obligated to or have been ultimatumed into it. So if you want to sit here and defend it, you can sit here and defend it. If you just want to be allowed in the chat, we will unban you from the chat. I have said many times, your only option now is to call in or be banned. If you are going to commit right now, promise that you are not going to try to have any sideshows. You're not going to post controversial things. You're not going to try to have arguments in the chat and you're just going to participate as is the actual thing. We don't even let people insult the callers in the chat, let alone somebody go all caps, Trump 2024, Marjorie Taylor Greene. You can do that. But if you're <laughs> no. only here because no, you feel no, like I, you I, have I'm... to be, you don't have to do that. But if you're willing to defend it, you can do so now. No, I, I'll go ahead and defend it because I'm already on the phone. Okay, so you're an atheist who, who supports Donald Trump. Oh, I was going to ask, you're an atheist who supports Donald Trump and Marjorie Taylor Greene, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who has openly called for a, our country to become a Christian nationalist country. And now Matt would like to know if you believe the 2020, uh, 2020 election was stolen. No, I do not believe it was stolen. Okay. And, and, and guess what? I've even been vaccinated too. Cool. So yeah. Yeah, you I know. don't think the election was Go ahead. stolen. You don't think the election was stolen. You support, uh, you've been vaccinated, and yet you support the people who are claiming the election was stolen, who were opposed to vaccinations, and who don't want you to be allowed to be an atheist. Why? Sure. So in, in my, I have a handful of things, in my opinion, are like the most important thing when it comes to uh, electing people as president, and and those things are not on the top of my, my priority list when it comes to putting people in office. Christian nationalism is not on the top of your priority list. Can't relate. You're clearly maybe you're an atheist. I, you're not a I'm skeptic, confused. and you're not an impressive thinker. I, I'm confused because I it I I think I just heard you mm -hmm. say you have a list of things you consider when electing someone to office, but those things aren't a priority. No, the so, things you listed weren't a priority is what he's saying for ah, those things. Okay, yes. I, I thought he was talking about his own list. So no. what are your priorities when it comes to deciding who to support? Sure, one of them I, I look for is anti-war. Like, I, I absolutely hate hate war. I see what we've been through since since uh, George Bush and how we've interrupted, how we've basically been in the Middle East 
how we've been in Ukraine and everything else. And I, I, I despise war. And I look at the last president that we had uh, help stabilize, I guess, uh, tensions between us and North Korea that the previous presidents were not able to do, kept us out of war. And then I look at how we're involved in Ukraine, how we're involved and in, about to get involved in the Middle East, which could lead to World War III. And I think that that is super important to me. Matt, I think we'll have a question before you do it. Matt, sorry, James, are you yeah. are you pretending? Is this a character? If it is, just tell me if this is a character that you're trying to do, and that you just wanted to get in the air and you just wanted to tussle. Is this is this for real, or is, is this a like a troll character thing? No, so I mean, is anything I said not is it, is anything I said not? Yes, act a, everything correct. you just said was absurd. How how was that absurd? Do you want to were go first? We involved Matt, in or? Ukraine as far as militarily. And we were not involved in Ukraine militarily. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We were not. Hang on, James, mm-hmm. Matt. Do you want to take it, or do you oh. want me to? Okay, go ahead. We weren't involved in Ukraine because there wasn't yet a war in Ukraine. It had nothing to do with Donald Trump. Not only did it not have anything to do with Donald Trump, it turns out that Putin, according to our own intelligence, was essentially grooming Trump in the hopes that when he did invade Ukraine, he would be able to get the kind of thing which he is pursuing right now and is honestly hoping that Donald Trump gets re-election. But the thing that Trump is currently promising, which is essentially going to be he's going to settle the war and make both sides make concessions, when that is not an acceptable solution because there is nothing Ukraine should give up. So your point about that, moot and stupid. Your point about Korea, more moot and stupid. Korea did uh, things for the camera and things that appeared to be popular, was not willing to make a single concession. We were not able to lift a single uh, sanction. And that would have been the hallmark of if they were actually doing anything besides things for the camera. And in fact, continued to develop some in secret and then some in the, trust me, bro, we're making peace so you don't have to worry about it, did not stop any of their stuff. So as far as the, it wasn't as though we were going to war tomorrow with Kim Jong-un and Trump's style of diplomacy before that luckily didn't result in any sort of strike since he was literally going on Twitter and throwing named insults and calling an autocrat fat and little rocket man and is about the stupidest form of diplomacy that maybe you think was some big brain genius move. The idea that Donald Trump was anti-war when we also now know for two reasons that he was constantly querying his defense department for plans on if they were going to mount an Iranian invasion and basically had to be talked about it, which we know from people who worked for him. And now because of the investigation into leaked documents, documents that he stole from the White House that were not his to have, that he was recklessly showing people of those very plans that he was having drawn up. So the idea that because there wasn't a new war during him, that this was an anti-war president is really, really stupid. What's your next point? Well, I have a question. Do well, you I think... would like to respond. He just sit there and rambled for like five minutes and I didn't interrupt. I what allowed you him to do, talk. I would like to be able it? to retort one of his 20 comments that he made. Wow. Ask, ask for permission. Ask me if you uh. can. I just did ask say, may I please excuse me? I said, I would like to, that's what that was pretty much like an open ended question. You have a thing you want to say, go ahead. I don't, I no longer give a fuck. Yeah. Well, so there you go. You you get to make comments and and don't allow me to respond to anything. You just guys are really open minded. Hey, dipshit, I just said I don't give a fuck so that I would not say anything so that you would have the opportunity to reply, but you're too fucking stupid to grasp that. Are you going to reply or are you going to whine like a little bitch? Yeah, I, I, I like how you're calling me names and I've been very, very respectful. Okay, jackass, <laughs> I voluntarily silenced myself on my own fucking show to give you time and all you've done is whine. I'm now telling you that when I unmute you, you can now respond to Jimmy. Are you going to do that or are you going to fucking whine? Don't you dare, don't you dare 
pretend that me shutting myself down on my own fucking show is mistreating you. You are now free to speak. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, it was a miscommunication. When you said I didn't want to speak, I thought you were going to drop me. So I apologize about that. No, the comment I was going to make is, is as far as like, I don't even know what to say. You made like 20 points in like five minutes. But yeah, as far as like you're saying that he instigated stuff between North Korea and South Korea, I think it's very interesting considering the South Koreans. Even so can I cut you off Trump when you lie about what I North said? Because I never once said that he instigated things between North Korea and South Korea. Wasn't something I said once. So should it, do I have to let you finish or would that not be polite enough for you and you'll feel oppressed? No, if you'd let me finish what I was saying, you oh, were making the thing comments that, started with that the he lie? was instigating okay, go ahead. violence okay. by making. Go ahead. Continue your lie. Did you not say in the comments that he was sitting there instigating and calling him Little Rocket Man to instigate I did talk uh, about violence between his North Korea? terrible form of diplomacy and the risk that that took. Mm -hmm. You stated that I said he instigated violence between North and South Korea. I did not make such a claim. I might, if you asked me whether or not I felt that way or not, I would have defended that, uh, yes, I think South Korea would have been in the most danger, but I actually didn't make that statement, and there would be much more nuance there. So if you'd like to only address what I said, and by the way, complaining about how it was 20 things, it was three examples of why the thing you said was nonsense. Now, your turn, okay. James, because I'm gracefully yeah, giving okay. you an so opportunity. I don't know the exact word. I'm sorry, I don't know the exact verbiage you said, but you were implying. Yeah, you added words. I guess. Uh, I'm sorry. You added words. You added South Korea. Okay. I, okay. I, I don't remember the exact verbiage you said because, like I said, you you said a lot in like you went on like a rant for like three or four minutes. James. I can't remember the exact verbiage you said. James. I, I remember James. the exact South Korean even former minister even thanked and gave credit to Donald Trump for bringing North Korea to the negotiation tables to so establish what? basically peace agreements. And since then. Excuse and me? what and what resulted from that? Did a treaty happen? Are they still in talks? Are they still all of this, by the way, not things that changed after Biden? Did that solidify into anything? Or is what I the actual thing I said? Is that what mm -hmm. happened that they did lots of things for the camera and ultimately kept pursuing their ability to uh, uh, threaten parts of the world with mass, ca mass casualties? Which one actually happened? Did peace happen, or are they a bigger threat than ever? I would say they're not a bigger threat than ever, then because you are last time I checked, they're not firing missiles over Japan yes. and testing their nuclear programs like yes. they were and dropping they, bombs over the They ocean. have thrown, they have shot missiles. The fact that there isn't a frequency as before, when this is all staked on it being uh, Trump's doing, uh, well, Biden's now in office, so you're... You're sitting here trying to defend that he's some great anti-war president when, again, his form of diplomacy was at first to try and belittle because he has the mind of a sixth grader. He bullies his way and decided to take that chance with an autocrat. Luckily, that person, when they took stock, is a coward and is afraid of dying. And so when he took stock, he realized I, whether or not we go to war, I end up dying if we do. I, that's my best at guess at his motivation. Uh, then they did pretty things. He wrote me the greatest letter, uh, such a beautiful letter. And this is a letter that matters because he says, we're really going to look forward to working together. And then they didn't do shit. And the idea that they currently have a more developed, more technologically advanced and more capable arsenal than ever. And they just started making deals with Russia while Russia is at war with Ukraine, that is going to further bolster their power and give them regional allies if a skirmish were to happen, and you think they're not more dangerous than ever, I don't know how to relate to the type of brain you have, because it's not one I'm familiar with. Can I respond to that? I don't care if you do. Well, I mean, I, I don't want to say, man, if you don't want to have a like I said, I, I, I'm just looking at North Korea 
stop firing nuclear weapons. We were not involved in any war. They wars. never fired nuclear weapons. As, they tested nuclear as weapons. As weapons. They never fired they nuclear, nuclear weapons. weapons. And they yes, still test they, they still test weapons. I, they still test IV, and ICBMs. And I'm literally looking at a list of North Korea missile launches from 1984 through to present. They fired more in 2016 than in 2015, more in 2017 than in 2015, none in 2018. Uh, then in 19, it was about the same. And in 2021, sorry, 2022, it's exploded to 70 some odd times. Man, thank goodness However, that we achieved peace with North Korea. Yeah, it's a good thing we, we, we got peace. But let me ask this question, James. Do you think mm -hmm. that Israel would have done pretty much the same thing with regard to Gaza if Trump was president? I, yeah, I absolutely do think he would, but I would not Ooh. think we would not be sending carriers over there, and I do not think we would be sending U.S. troops over there instigating it. Oh, okay. So you don't you don't really give a fuck about whether or not we we have war. It's about whether or not we're involved with any sort of troops and and munitions. No, so I think that us sending still... troops over there is going to instigate things. I, if you don't think that the U.S. getting involved in foreign affairs in the Middle East after what we've been through is a bad idea. I don't know what to say, man. Oh, I well, love that. <laughs> how long were you in the military, James? I, I have not been in the military. Yeah, well, I have for eight and a half fucking years, and I'm a veteran of foreign wars. Don't pretend that we're meddling in the Middle East for the first fucking time. Don't pretend that you have any understanding of what any of this is like or what it's like for people who are actually over there. You're in agreement that what happened in Gaza probably would have happened no matter who was president. So when you said that you support Trump because you're opposed to war, well, that's a stupid reason because we'd still be just in the exact same position with regard to the situation in Gaza. Oh, well, then we wouldn't send troops in and uh, we wouldn't send carrier aircraft carriers over there. Yes, we fucking would. We will always send yeah. aircraft carriers when fights break out in Israel. I know because I served on the aircraft carrier that sat outside of fucking Israel where I went into fucking Haifa. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. You are lying to yourself, pretending that you're anti-war. You're not. You're anti-U.S. being involved in a war, and that's because you have a draft-dodging, cowardly piece of shit who was the president. With it, you're the you're one acting. You're the you're advocating for the president who likes people who weren't caught and weren't prisoners. You're opt opting for the opting for the president who does not respect the military. You're opting for the president who doesn't know shit, who only wants to fucking exercise his power, who has zero diplomacy and zero understanding of the military. You don't know how the military is run. You don't know anything about any of this shit. Go away. I, well, I have one question because you guys are talking about whether it would be different, the Israel thing. James, if Trump was in, would the support for the, uh, uh, let's say, ground invasion of Gaza that is uh, imminent, uh, would the hesitancy uh, that we are currently seeing as they are being encouraged by people like Biden and as well as now the UN, do you think that more or less Palestinian civilians would die if Trump was president instead of Biden? Right now, I would say it would probably be the same. What I'm worried about is You're escalation. Nuts. Just You're like I don't nuts. think that you think it would be the same. You are you are nuts. Goodbye, James. Yeah, because it's right. I don't it's, care. Well, you, you're, you're nuts. It would be the same. The number of Palestinian civilian casualties when literally this week they had to almost threaten Israel to say, no, you have to start getting people out of there. You have to work on a humanitarian corridor. You have to start doing things that they were fully not going to do before you start a ground invasion of Gaza and just go ham. And that you think Donald Trump wouldn't have just done whatever he could do to say, and we support Israel completely because this is a this is our war too, our mission too. You are you are an insane person. I you you don't have value here. But let's assume for a second that James was right, and that it would have been exactly the same. 
then why the fuck are you voting for the stupidest, least qualified, most dishonest, most criminal motherfucker? Why are you sidelining all of the things that you don't care as priorities if the, if the, if the result would have been the same on the issue you care about? Why don't you start caring about the other issues as well? You're a liar. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I just wanted him to own the libs. To... Take on the woke moralists. I feel like if you you genuinely feel that it would be the same, no matter what, then you go to the next. See, here's the thing. When you prioritize your criteria for voting, you say, I'm going to start with number one, number two, number three, and we're going to keep going until we find something that's different. If you genuinely believe that the war stuff would be exactly the same, then you go down until you find what's different. And what I find is different is everything to do with humanity. Yeah. Let's remember, too, that this is a person who, it wasn't just that he said Trump. He also said Marjorie Taylor Greene, that that should be the, the vice Jewish president. The Jewish space laser queen. Right, the QAnon lady. But also, what I really should have asked is, hey, what is your highest priority and why is it that you hate trans people? Could I have been wrong? Could have been. I could be wrong. I'm not going to say for sure that James hates it's trans probably. people, but I think that there is a high probability that the real reason an atheist would support a Christian nationalist like Marjorie Taylor Greene to be one heartbeat, one plaque filled heartbeat away from the presidency. Careful. Well, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know. He's clearly an unhealthy man. I'm not saying he's... I, I had a triple bypass. If we're going to go after people for their health stuff, he, he hasn't. Matt, if before your triple bypass, you would become president, I would have assumed you were going to die if you didn't get the bypass. I, <laughs> it is a very stressful job. I'm sorry. But anyway, I'm saying a high risk, a higher risk than the average bear that the vice president will become president. By the way, I put Biden and Harris in that just statistically. Biden is a higher risk to not make it through this presidency or the next one if he gets another term. Uh, You would put him one heartbeat away from, sure, one heartbeat away from what is arguably the most uh, powerful position in the entire world, the Jewish space laser lady, the person who's still having to apologize for makes some new stupid remark about the Holocaust or Jews pretty regularly. that this was a person who chose, yeah, I just feel like if I was betting money, I probably wouldn't lost, have lost anything if I had said he, the real thing is he doesn't like trans people. And yet he didn't bring up trans people at all. But I still feel that that is. But again, I'm not saying take that to mean that for sure he doesn't like trans people. I just suspect. I just have a suspicion. I was commenting, fun fact, uh, I've never had a Big Mac. And it's uh, because I. I know I don't like their secret sauce and I don't like an extra bun in between the burgers. So I used to eat the shit out of some double quarter pounders with cheese, <laughs> but I, I've never eaten a Big Mac. I mean, I probably had a bite of it of all the stuff just because I tasted the, the secret sauce or whatever, special sauce, whatever. Do you want right. to take Paul or, or are we good? I, I think I might just tell Paul to call another night. Uh, yeah, no. Because I don't care what you assert our covenants with the Jews. Uh, oh, Paul, yeah. If, if we want to talk about God's covenant with the Jews, uh, let's do that on the Sunday show. Also, you're going to have to convince a lot of Jews that, since there are a lot of Jews who don't believe Israel should be a state, uh, and that that there is a prohibition in the Torah on such a thing. Uh, so good luck with that. Go If you want to argue with that, maybe go argue with Jews before us. I would like to do something slightly unusual. Only, only done this really once or twice. Um, and you're going to be slightly annoyed. You know how at the end of the show, I put a bow on everything and wrap it all up? We haven't done super chats yet. You know that, right? Uh, I'm, I'm giving you advance warning. Okay. In that after we're done going through the super chats, when it's time to put a bow and wrap it all up, I would like you to bow it and wrap it up today. Oh, thanks, Ann. I'll take it. You, you've done, yeah, yeah. You, you are, 
one of my best friends on the planet. You have done a lot of good stuff. You are critical to getting us to the 100,000. I'm probably more critical to getting us to the 100,000, but <laughs> you were at least essential to getting us to the 100,000. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'd like, you know, you know, Mike, but let's. In that my me. power cables and internet had to work, I was pivotal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I like it. Um, uh, yeah. I, I appreciate that very much. We've got quite a few to go through, but a lot of them are mostly saying congratulations. So I think a lot that of them one says be, title for the episode. What the fuck? Yeah. I'm going to fire this producer. So, so but hard. He sucks. Someone ought to fire <laughs> that Jimmy guy. I, that's what I've, <laughs> I've started engaging comments. will be like, I just wish Jimmy wouldn't set the rules on this channel. Essentially is a pretty funny. Somebody just said a hundred thousand for Matt, 113 for Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough. 999. Um, yeah. Nine 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 nine. Somebody really saying no in German right here. But David Morris just saying yay. Thanks so much. Uh, and and because Jimmy's going to wrap this up later, as we go through the super chats, they're going to be slightly different because I don't have the the list in front of me uh, from before. So we'll alternate. Um, but yeah, if I don't get to wrap anything later, huge thank you to everybody who's been a part of this growth and participating in chat, whether you've donated or not. Don't get me wrong, the donations help keep me in healthcare, but yeah. Yeah, look, the people who watch it after the fact too, um, yeah. most episodes we make more money off of the ad revenue than the Super Chats total. Uh, however, our business model would not work without the Super Chats. So that's not to encourage people, we need both to keep things at the way it is. And I like the way it is because we're able to incentivize our main hosts. We're able to pay them a fair enough that not only is it fair, but it actually is like a, hey, look, sometimes you feel burnt out, but it'll pay for a massage or it, more than a massage. But we're able to pay fairly and, and uh, incentivize the uh, all the staff here and now expand and get new producers and hopefully another channel going. And yeah, it's really, really nice. So we love your support. Uh, and a reminder to anybody who's thinking about it, $10 or more will get you on the board tonight, but $10 from skeptics and scoundrels. Grats, you bums. One of our favorite people who I suspect, especially as I phase out, you will see phased in more often in the future. If he wants to, I mean, I can't make that up his mind for that. How you going to force him? Yeah. You already did this one, but I'll do it again. 999 from KB and hundred for a hundred thousand. Well, 99 love this channel. Uh, go Jimmy yourself, Jimmy. Love it. And yeah thank you so much that's incredibly generous and kind that was awesome steven saunders says congratulations jimmy matt and everyone else who contributes to the line less jimmy yes haha <laughs> don't <laughs> careful you might convince me to stay just to piss people off because i am motivated to do something like that uh however this is actually a good opportunity that i'm realizing i didn't do earlier and i'm a little ashamed of myself because i didn't thank everybody else who hosts here by name and they deserve to be uh, uh, thanked. So, uh, let's start off with the Skep Talk tr Step Skept Skep Talk crew, who has now been joined by Erica of Gutsick Gibbon. But the crew that you have uh, seen up to now, Forrest Valkai, not only a great host, but honestly one of my favorite people. He is a good friend. He's a good dude. And by the way, if all of you after this decide to go to his Instagram or his YouTube and just leave a comment and say, hey, we know you're super stressed out right now because you're working your ass off to be ready to defend your thesis and we just wanted to let you know that you're cool. I bet he would appreciate that because I know that he is currently stressed as hell. I'm not going to do that long on everybody because I just realized that would take all night. Shannon Q is amazing and I love Shannon Q and Shannon Q is probably responsible for a lot more than everybody even realizes because Shannon Q is who introduced me to the atheist community sort of at large into other creators and stuff. So uh, Shannon gets a lot of credit too. Uh, also, thank you to John Gleason, the godless engineer, who I think we are going hey. to be featuring in some uh, uh, debates uh, in the near future, as well as R and Ra. Uh, I'm excited to get both of them on on some specific uh, debate topics. Uh, Skeptic, I said Shannon, Forrest, Aaron, Erica. Uh, is there somebody I'm missing i think i got i think that's the whole skeptic crew uh dying out loud dave warnock somebody who i feel privileged to have as a friend and i am absolutely uh, uh really glad that we're getting to steal him for what will be his uh last 
bits of wisdom to impart on people as I don't, I hate to spoiler alert it for anybody who doesn't know, but Dave Warnock is dying. Uh, and if you haven't seen his show on Tuesdays called dying out loud, you are missing what is a very good show. Uh, and every time I catch it, look, I actually can be pretty, uh, I don't know what the word is, but I don't consume a lot of atheist YouTube. I don't consume a lot. And when I produce shows, I barely listen. Uh, however, Dave's show has a way of making me interested and pulling me in and actually making me feel quite inspired. There's a guy on Wednesday who uh, need not be named. No, Matt, uh, you are my first channel partner on this network. We were You were the first person who back on September 19th, 2020, I said, hey, man. Uh, uh, if you wanted, well, before this, obviously it wasn't the day of the first show, but I said, uh, if you wanted to do a show, here's what I could pay you, but it, I, I would love to do it. And you were like, awesome. I don't do it for the pay, but that's cool too. <laughs> um, uh, and that's, that's this channel to me will always be wrong. I'm doing started. it for the pay now. Well, I'd like to did, stay alive. That was before a heart attack. You didn't have to invite me on tonight. So you can't say that was for the pay. Uh, no, I, I just, I like having you on. Yeah. Uh, but no, it, it, it means a lot to me. And then let's be honest. We got to thank yeah. the three people who yeah. do the best show on this network and the show that I hope this year gets a hundred thousand subscribers of their own, the ones who yeah. are here for them. And that is the transatlantic call in show featuring Arden Hart, my second in command, my, uh, uh, my, my criminal cohort, uh, and producer and person who seriously, y'all have no idea how important it is that she exists for me to continue to exist and not go crazy. Me too. Yeah. As well as Katie Montgomery, uh, who Yay. is just one of the best in the biz and family doctor, mayo. Ben, what's that? And loves mayo. And loves mayonnaise. Don't forget to remind her and family doctor, Ben, who both is an awesome person, an awesome friend. And I like the bragging rights that we have scientists and doctors who work here. I yeah. love that. Uh, and I, then I, I'm just a good we're Like the only credibility I had today is that I'm a veteran. Other, other than that, I'm just a goober that talks. I, I, my, I have less than that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I basically, okay. You know what I'm realizing I'm doing Matt? I'm doing the wrap up now so we can just go after this is realistically is what the wrap up we, should we be. Sum it up quick and easy. Let's, let's get through some super chats. This is yeah. me. And then I'm going to do mods and volunteers later. Yes. Huge. Just make a list. You do that while I'm reading supers. $10 yeah. to Steven Saunders. Congratulations, Jimmy, Matt, and everyone else who contributes to the line. Less Jimmy. Yes. Oh, we read that one. That was the one I said, I'm, I'm careful, a... you might convince me to stay to piss you off. That's right. Uh, AL says, adore you guys. Who are some of your favorite philosophers to read? David Hume. Yeah, I've 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 liked the David Hume books I've read. Book? Maybe I've only read one. Uh I don't read a lot of philosophy. I read a lot of historical nonfiction, to tell you the truth. I don't uh I, I've read a lot of Dan Dennett. Uh, Dan mm -hmm. Dennett, David Hume, probably the two I've spent the most time reading, but there's there's some others. Ten dollars from Pebble Punk the Apistivist. This channel has been both incredibly entertaining and provides so much clarity for me during my deconstruction. Congrats on 100K. Y'all definitely earned this success. Thank you so much, Pebble Punk. Yes, yes. Somebody just asked if someone, I, I did say, I'm just saying, I, I did mention them. Uh, $10 from Alan McIntyre. That's easy. Here's your next one. Boom. 1999 from Daniel Thomas. Thank you, Matt and Jimmy, for everything you do. Thank you, Daniel, for helping you know, saying thanks and contributing to what we do. Plus, uh, I think your icon may be uh, the best. Just flat black. Darkness. Like my heart. Uh, nine, 999 pounds from Air Rifles Range and HFT shooting. I am sure you will be missed, Jimmy. I'm sure the work you do behind the scenes on your channel will just elevate the show to another level, though. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy, and very best wishes. And to clarify, when inauguration comes around... I'm planning to not really be around on either. I'm not saying I'm moving over to the Jimmy snow channel and just working from there from now on. I, I, uh, I think the sometime show and my career as a constant YouTuber, as opposed to just a guest who occasionally is featured will be, that will conclude on January 21st, 2025. If I hope anybody was wondering or waiting. I don't plan to quit till I'm dead. Yeah. I, 
How many times have I said it in the past? And it always came up when people would say this fucking thing that I don't know why it annoyed me, but they annoyed me that Jimmy wants to be the new Matt. And I always said in response, I'm not going to be here as long as Matt. I will quit before Matt does. So why would I try to replace a person whose job I don't want? Anyway. This and Raising Snakes is all I want to do. 1999 from Wasp Runner. Congrats on the 100K. Much love for you guys from Aaron and Anthony. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Thank you, Aaron and Anthony. Wow, that's awesome. 1399 Canadian from Maple Sun. I appreciate everything you have made here, Jimmy. All the hosts and producers and mods are great. Go, Jimmy, yourself. Matthew K wants to say, I love you, Matt, and go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Lick my hairy taint is a thing that I had forgotten we had started last week, but someone reminded wow. me. Uh, congratulations on the 100K subs. Thank you so much. 100K T subs. So we got like 100 kits of subs. Kilo terabytes. Good. Thanks, Mapleson and Matthew. 999 from Melody Kate. The judge, in fact, said, as the trier of fact, I find that the witness is not credible. Congratulations ah, on 100K. That was, yeah, that was in reference to Trump on the stand. That was the... Uh, Basically, just saying. I don't know what he's the a judge liar. sounds like. That's the best judge imitation voice I could come up with on the fly. I'm trying to remember which judge that would have been. It wasn't the guy in Georgia, the dude who's like it's my in, age in or whatever. Yeah. Did you see that though? That have you seen the Georgia judge? He's seriously like. No. I I know that I don't feel like I would be incapable of being a good judge. I think I could have put in the education and the time to do it. And yet I don't trust the, a judge my age with something like that. I don't know. That's weird. I was really uh, proud of myself for adulting a little bit. So I made this post on Facebook about how we cleaned out the refrigerator, the freezer, and the pantry. And, you know, there's a lot of people who commented on it and stuff like that. And, and it was just a bit, a bit of fun. And then somebody posted with an animated GIF of, uh, nobody cares. <laughs> I was like, oh, how the fuck did you even get on my wall? What what did I do to you? Yeah. To make also, you come in and do nobody cares. Also, think about anything that you could truly say you don't care about. To respond to it with a meme breaks that possibility. You, you do care. Yeah, this is so I had this argument, you know, the when people say I could care less and I couldn't care less. And they're like, no, the correct version is I couldn't care less. I actually made the case that the correct version is I could care less, but I cared just enough to comment. Ah, there you go. Yeah, it's weird shit. I think we did this one before, but because it's $100, we're going to do them again twice. Canadian 100 right. from K Floop. Bravo to the line and everyone on it. This channel should be in the millions. And Amen. I'm going to include everyone on it and use that as the segue to... First of all, I'm going to thank Jen big time. Jen, I Got Cookies is yeah. uh, our most consistently here and happy to organize other mods or maybe not happy to, but does it sometimes. Uh, and not only is Jen an awesome person, but yesterday was Jen's birthday. So also Yay. happy birthday, Jen. Uh, Dylan. Uh, is also here very, very often, and we appreciate Dylan. We appreciate Stephanie Helms, who is here tonight, and a Morgan, who is uh, becoming a. Am I? What am I hearing? A Morgan, who is uh, becoming a bigger and bigger presence uh, over here, to the point that uh, I don't know if we've announced this already out loud and told everybody, but a Morgan is actually our new uh, producer and is currently in training. On top of that, we have lots of screeners who do awesome work for us and help us out a lot. I'm going to pull up uh, that list I was working on. But uh, uh, today was the apostate Paul, uh, as well as Jess, who actually got our show uh, off to a good start. And Critical Cupcake, who uh, is always available, uh, especially uh, Critical Cupcake is probably one of our most consistent last minute fill in people when somebody just doesn't show up and stuff. Uh, and I, I really, really appreciate that. Uh, and there are, there are many other people. What's that? If you've got a wrench and we didn't call your name, chime up in chat real quick to let everybody know you're here. Yeah. And, and for the record, there've been there, the list of people who this year have done at least a show or two or have modded here and there is very long. So I'm very sorry that I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to attempt to read them all, especially because there'll be some people that I forgot. I don't like anymore that are still on that list. And I don't want to accidentally shout them out. Uh, that's a joke. 
Kind of. Uh, but also, thank you. Uh, I know Ilya is another person that I want to shout out, has uh, done a bunch of stuff in the past. And uh, David has done a lot of screening for us as well. Not the David that you're all probably thinking of, but a different David, not my brother David, who somebody in the chat earlier decided to come in the chat and lie about multiple things. One that Matt and I, Matt and Jimmy are the only ones who are paid. How's that fair when we pay lots of other people? Uh, and two, that I had an assistant for years that I would brag about how they did it for free. The only assistant I had was my brother David. I would like that money back, but because he did not do it for free. It was expensive. <laughs> um, uh, so I don't know what that person was on about, but that was a weird thing. Anyway, different David. Uh, yeah, mod screeners, lots of just awesome people. I think I've, I hit the, the highlights, but I am sorry if somebody feels like they were left out. And obviously, I'm, there are people who also, over the last few years, could be included in the list who maybe aren't as active anymore. Uh, Mika, for example, used to uh, uh, do a ton and, and certainly didn't leave on bad uh, terms or anything. Uh, also, Eli and, and yeah, just lots of other people who have been a huge part over the years. Um, let me add this, too, and then we'll just get back to chats. But now I think we've pretty much covered... I mean, some of the people with wrenches are just friends who <laughs> we've decided to give wrenches over the years. Yeah, Eric, you can't keep talking over and over again and thinking we're going to highlight you as a mod. You're, no. you're just on the shows too often. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I'm yeah. just fucking with him. He's replying to somebody else. Let's crank out some supers. Hell yeah. This one's yours. And now it's from Chifka. It's a meme, but true. If you want the answer to something online, post a wrong answer and you'll be flooded with people angrily correcting you, ask for the answer and you get nothing. Yeah, that's, yep. I don't know for a fact that that's true and yet have zero difficulty accepting it. As true, uh, as yeah. likely true. Uh, $10 from LHRPG official. Thank you guys for doing what you do. You have helped me so much, not only in my deconstruction, but also helping me identify bad arguments from theists as well as myself. Keep up the great work. That's about Thank as you. good a compliment as we could get. Cause that's what we're hoping to do. $20 from Jeff Edwards. Congrats to everyone at the line. I just now realize you guys are live early. Matt, you're a legend. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Yeah. We went live early because we hit the hundred thousand subscriber line. Yeah. Ben T says, congrats on 100K, and I'd like to say congrats on one of the fullest beards. No bald spot. Yes. Just a, that's a good, even, that's a good beard. $20 from Jim Bowes. Wow. Crown News does a good job of providing a meta analysis of an article. Left, center, right bias, factuality, as well as allowing you to find that first article and analysis of what's different between left and right. Thanks. You're not the first person to, to recommend ground news. I don't know why I started reading it like that. Uh, I think I know why. Because uh, I was missing Jim. We need to get Jim back on show. For sure. Uh, another 10 from Jim Barrows. For the Putin collapsing story, ground news says two sources, both right-leaning, both low factuality sources. Mm -hmm. So I only can hope that he actually had a heart attack, but I, I, I can't say I believe he did. $20 from Gamer. Just woke up, saw Jimmy, and had to just give money. Matt, you're great and should be Speaker of the House. Well, okay, I'll take it. Uh, congrats on reaching 100,000 subs. Love you guys. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy, or me. Wow. You're off to horny jail. Uh, sorry, uh, Gamer, you like me, which means we don't have much in common. It wouldn't work. <laughs> uh, $10. $10. Oh, That's God. you. Yeah, Rufinus you. of Aquilia. States' rights on moral issues is an admission that there is no God-given objective morality. Ooh, that's, that's brilliant. I wish I'd have thought of it. Yeah, it's interesting. Wow. That is absolutely... Like, can you back up for a second? Yeah. I'm going to do the old guy thing and take a picture of that with my phone so that I have it later... Old guys don't know how to take pictures with their phones. That's a pretty modern thing, Matt. That could actually, like straight up, that could end up in a debate or in a video. Uh, that's one of my favorite insights of the last 
month or so for sure. That's both awesome and also hurts my feelings because I said some insightful things tonight. Moving on. You did. I'm just kidding. No, I, I, I didn't. I'm excluding you because you say insightful things all the time. I made that. I was such a jerk to that one guy. I realized after, but he was such an asshole. I didn't care. But the, the That's okay. That's fair, but the I part love where, that because I get called a jerk all the time. So when you're more of a jerk on my show, it cuts me some slack. Yeah. When I, the thing where I said, say, may I please, that was probably too far. I probably went too much. Uh, $10 from Simo hey, Secular. Just one more goddamn time. <laughs> yeah. $10 from Simo Secular look like Community. A bit? Oh, I bet. I bet he did. Uh, we love the line. Everyone on the line inspired me <clears throat> to find like minded people here in Southeast Missouri. Now we are working on a nonprofit to help fund scholarships of gr for graduates and SSA chapters here. That's amazing to hear. Uh, yeah, that's fantastic. And when we do events and stuff and can plug things in the future, once once you're up and going and stuff, let us know. We feature people all the time on the channel who are doing that kind of work. I wonder if they're I, – I, I didn't spend a lot of time in southeast Missouri, you know, like Cape area and stuff like that. Um, yeah, are you guys close to Cape? I don't know. I've never intentionally been in Missouri for more than to drive through it, so I definitely. You know, I was I was born there, so. Right. <clears throat> Ten dollars sixty nine cents from Davey Lee. Jimmy, if you don't read this on air, I understand. Okay, fuck it. Oh, I mean, but <laughs> sixty nine is a good thing. Six point nine is a good thing. Interrupted by a period. Congratulations on hitting a hundred thousand. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> and 68 is you do me and I owe you one. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. Ugh. Uh, $10 from Alicia. Mc that wasn't at the concept of doing you. It was the period, the, the concept of 69 with a period. That was the shutter. It still matters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, $10 from Alicia McManus. Hey, Matt and Jimmy, congrats. Love both of your guys' videos for years. Jimmy, I met you briefly, brief, briefly. It's getting, I've been on air a long time. Uh, briefly in big screen VR, I felt too awkward to say much. How do you feel about viewers coming up to talk? I just, just hang out with us, you know, just hang out the way everybody's hanging out and don't feel like you should talk less or more than you already would have as long as you're adhering to the rules. I will say to anybody who, as a result of tonight, sees me in there, if I'm in the middle of a discussion or a conversation or especially a debate, I'm not recording, so I'm not trying to hide that I'm a content or, or, or I, so I'm not saying I'm trying to hide it that I'm a content creator because I'm re secretly recording and want to whatever. Please don't interrupt the conversation and go, oh my God, you're Jimmy Snow. Cause people do that. And it, ch it tends to interrupt the flow of what we're doing. And now people, you know, as they're talking to me, you can see that they're also, they have their little panel up and they're pulling me up and stuff. Uh, if you want off to the side, say go Jimmy yourself or something, I'll know what you mean. Uh, but yeah, please don't, please. I like to go in there and just be me and whatever. And granted it says my name above my head. So it's not like I'm, I'm not whatever recognizable but um yeah don't make a big deal about it i don't like being a public figure so let's not let's not highlight it more like fredericktown farmington area close to cape charter cool ah. well i like it i like the area maybe i'll come up there and hang out 1999 from wonder she her thanks for this earlier show so much more engaging to watch live oh awesome yeah no, no. if we hit 200,000 next wednesday um we'll start early for that too Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, though I think the next, I think for most people, the next benchmark is usually considered 250. It's 100, 250, 500, a million, I think. Um, I wouldn't know. I haven't crossed 180 yet. I've only crossed two. I've only done the first two, 100 and 250. Not that I wasn't excited when I hit 200. Uh, and then 300 and then 400 and then went back down under 400. Um, turns out you shouldn't... If you care about your subscriber number, don't abandon your channel for about a year. It's really bad for it. Uh, Stein Carl says, Matthew 528, was it good for you too? That's from the Sermon on the Mount. But I don't remember the verse. I but I say unto you, 
that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Yes. So may as well just do the full deed. <laughs> wife. Yeah. There's no difference. No, I'm going to get charged for it. Adultery involves hurting somebody else, so I'm not actually com- uh, saying cheat on your Yeah, no, partners. no, but this, this doesn't involve... This is saying if you look at a woman with lust, you've already committed adultery in your heart. Doesn't it's just adultery in the in the sense of mm-hmm. you've committed the deed. It doesn't mean that you've violated any oaths. Gotcha. I guess I, I was interpreting it as don't commit adultery just because you would be doing it in your heart already. Yeah. Uh uh and broadly interpreting adultery to mean just cheating. Because, I concur. Yeah. Keep keep your that. promises. Lemon peel. By the way, I'm polyamorous. So it, before somebody comes in and is saying, I just am making that clear. I'm not against people having multiple partners. And I know that adultery, that, that things, whatever. Uh, I don't know why I felt like, I just don't want to get canceled in the comments again. Uh, lemon peel angelfish, just to say congratulations, 100K. Well done. Jimmy Matten, all presenters and mods and crew. Woohoo! <laughs> $10 Canadian from Nate Smith. Show pitch. Jimmy prank calls Republican Congress people in his Trump accent. I support the heck out of that program. Congrats on 100K. Matt uh, Gates, do I you know who's that. calling right now? No, that's not very good. I have to make, to get an accurate Trump voice, I literally have to make my voice soar. Um, so I start up with my, this is sort of younger Trump years ago, where he would just say, and boy, all those girls around, but his voice got hoarse. I don't know if a lot of people have noticed, especially since... um. Uh, money, 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 the apprentice. Uh, his voice has gotten, it's very, very harsh now, very hard, very, and we don't like it. We, frankly, frankly, if you, it's a bad deal. It's a really bad deal. It's gotten really hoarse and, uh, worse. Anyway, I could talk about that all night, but I won't because nobody else cares. But there's, uh, 9.99 from Bryn Poo KC. Congrats on 100K. Here's to the next 100K. Ten hours Canadian for player one. There are two things I know we all have faith in. No, we don't. I think therefore I am, and you think therefore I am, as we in as as in we have faith in ourselves and whatever outside of the self we're interacting with. Uh no. That's just an equivocation of the term faith. Um uh, I think it's probably best to say that. If, if you're just suggesting that faith is any belief in the absence of certainty, then you're using faith in a way that I don't know is, is particularly useful. But, you know, let's be charitable to somebody who donated some money. If you're saying that we all have a, a belief that may be unwarranted, um, Descartes' point with the cogito, I think, therefore I am, was showing that that was the only belief, essentially, that that could be warranted. And it's warranted by virtue of there must be some experiencer that may, that would be being deceived. Um, But the you think, therefore I am, um, yes, we cannot prove that hard solipsism is not correct. And therefore, I'm happy to accept that you and I, player one, share a universe. And I can't I, prove it. I see. Whereas I say I will, I have no other choice but to operate as though that is true. But I, I, I agree too. Yeah, I, I, I don't know that Matt's not an NPC, and that all the only thing I can speak for is personal thought. And even there with the I think, therefore I am. Uh, I hate to be Jordan Peterson right now, but wh- what is the definition of am? What are you referring to? What are you amming? Yeah. Uh, we're, I, I see, I went down the same path and then I stopped myself cause I was like, oh, it's just somebody saying something cool and yeah. donating money. And uh, rather than being pedantic boy. So like Arden and I will go out and there's this woman in our neighborhood that walks their, her dogs. And we always identify that she is the main character and we are just NPCs in her world. <laughs> and so it's your world. I just live in it. No, you're right. And, and thank you for the thing, but I, I guess I have that. Sort of like you were talking about before, when you see some certain things on Twitter, you just can't stop yourself. I am more opposed to anyone ever suggesting I have any kind of faith 
than almost anything. And I feel like that's one yeah. of my triggers for sure. Yeah, yeah I'm with you. Uh, 1999 from Greg Murkowski. This is in honor of I've Got Cookies birthday a day late. Yay. I'd already sent something into Dave's show before I heard about it. Well, I will uh, figure out a $20 gesture to do for I Got Cookies in your, in your name. Should do much more than a $20 gesture for cookies for her birthday. Oh, yeah. Keep, go ahead. Add words like much. It's easy when it's my wallet. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, we'll, 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 we'll saying, do something nice. I'm chipping in from mine as well. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And, um, and uh, Morgan, please uh, remember to remind me to make sure I don't forget to figure out that gesture. <laughs> I have to, I have to put the tasks around. It won't be, it's just cause I'm stupid. Don't worry. Uh, I do forget things. This is you. Wait. Yeah. It's $50, but I don't know what currency, but Australian. I thought that was AU. On on here, it's always just been A. Ah, okay. Fifty dollars Australian from Nyan Kumar. Hi all. Greetings from down under, dear madam. A big fan. I love that you've scared Dr. Jordan Peterson from debating you. Uh, to be fair, I didn't, it wasn't very difficult. I'm so glad that you're here helping us understand these complicated ideas and concepts with honesty and integrity. Thanks. Thank you. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a shame that it took absolutely no effort just asking a couple of difficult questions and yeah. all of a sudden uh, all of a sudden you hear run for the hills playing. Do you bloody mind? Um Nyan, I just wanted to say as a note, when I make avatars in like video games and stuff, literally how you look is what I end up usually making. This is not me hitting on you, but it in my ideal like what I would look like is actually you. Just thought I'd let you know that. You are the guy I imagine myself to be when I'm playing <laughs> games. At the, yes. You've got the face I wish I had. Well done. $20 from Dante Verona. Millard Fillmore Yay. was the last U.S. president from the Whig Party. The Republicans have lost the last seven of eight popular votes for president. And Gen Z overwhelmingly supports Democrats. We can make Trump the last Republican president. Fair point. We could. Uh, but we probably won't. Yeah, I, I think we probably won't, but I, I agree that Dante's got a point. Yeah, because... I think what would happen is if the Republicans consistently lost, like for the next 50 years, yeah. they would change their party and then a new Republican. But it'd be it'd be changed for the better, I would think. I hope. But also, I have so little uh, confidence in modern-day sensationalism and the idea that you would just meme somebody out of a presidency actually working at some point. Maybe it already has. Maybe it's worked to our advantage, but... Uh, but the parties have already flipped before. At some point, even though this is going to weird people out, at some point I could easily see myself voting for a Republican if the parties were to flip again. Yeah. Uh, not me, because I... I don't know. Well, yeah, I guess if that's... If we're still two-party and it is the yeah. one that's closest to socialism, yeah, I guess so. Yep. $10 Australian from Gamer. Jimmy, when are you going to grow your hair out so we can make some Thor jokes? Also, then I'll have a god to worship. Uh, you know, you flirted with me in your last chat, and yet you've just revealed that you have. You must be a newer fan because I started with long hair. You go to my Instagram, Jimmy, Jimmy A. Snow. There's all kinds of photos with me with uh, trying to cosplay Jesus, basically. Mormon Jesus. see his only parts. <laughs> uh, um, 10 Australian from PhD Tony, friend of the channel. In a very real sense, religious faith is simple self-delusion, and while people can pretend it's harmless, it can be spectacularly damaging. I value this channel's contribution to rational public discourse. Totally agree. I have made the case very many times when people go, what about harmless religions? That anything which invokes a faith-based belief is inherently harmful. That you, I have yet to see uh, an example of a non-harmful type of faith. Uh, even if the it's a minimal fa uh, uh, harm of just increasing the gullibility of a person or or convincing them of a foundation um, that is non-reliable, I think that that is still harm. And then this must be the follow-up one uh, or the extension of it. PhD Tony said, Jimmy, a sanity that is being maintained, is that the dramatic 100K revelation? In as much as it can be, but that's a fair point. 
100 simoleons from Mark Smith. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Here's to the next 100K. Amen. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, 99 from Poofy, which is just a fun name. Poofy74 says, hey guys, fellow atheists here. I really enjoy all your shows. Keep doing the good work, throwing a bit of support your way. Next time I see you, see either one of you at NanoCon, I'll say hi. Oh, awesome. Uh, I want to get back. I don't know. I haven't heard about the next NanoCon. Um, Where is NanoCon usually? Nashville. It's the Nashville Nuns. Oh, okay. Um, although this may be a different NanoCon since we didn't capitalize the N-O, but I've, I've spoken and done shows. I did a magic show one year at NanoCon. I, anytime, if, if Gail comes to me and says, hey, you want to do NanoCon or Elliot does whatever, I'm, I'm there. So Must be nice to get invited. <laughs> Uh, $20 from Raven 200. He, him. I'm a noob, but I am no scrub poggers stream, Jimmy and Matt. Uh, hopefully those 100 K subscribers aren't just campers, but even if they are GG, yo, here's to a 200 K achievement. Jimmy, go get hit by 100 damage AOE attack. I can say from experience, uh, I mean, sure. There's going to be some campers in there, but our channel actually performs audience wise more like a channel with 250,000 subscribers. I think it's yep. because there's five different ch shows on the channel that for some reason, if a person only is here for one of them, they're like, well, I'm not going to subscribe. I don't want it to give me all five, but the algorithm doesn't work that way. Just subscribe. And what little additional algorithm you get will go away within a week or two, but it means a lot to us. The algorithm will still only commit you to what you actually are likely to watch. And by the way, Raven, that's a good thing too, because a scrub is a guy that can't get no love from me. Oh yeah, yeah. Ten dollars from BW Dingus. Congrats on hundred thousand subs. Thank you, BW Dingus. Another ten Australian dollars from PhD Tony. The U.S. was completely non-interventionalist in the lead up to the first and second world wars. Appeasement, isolation, and non-interventionism have been historically demonstrated to simply not work. Yep. Yeah. Before I do the next one, somebody in chat once again says, are you familiar with Howard Sturrup? He's been on MDD multiple times defending Flat Earth and other bonkers idea. I'm afraid he's fairly beneath you and ultimately not worth your time. Unfortunately, I've already agreed, agreed to debate him on Friday. Um, and so since I've agreed and I'm getting paid either way, uh, if it turns out that he's a cuckoo, um, I, I, well, if it's too easy, then okay. Maybe I'll get high and, and make it fair. Yeah. They did say flat earther. If that's true, I think there's a good chance they don't deserve you. Yeah. No scrubs is TLC. I don't want no scrubs. $10 from RC to Shane. Congrats, you fucking assholes. With love from Boston. Parking a car in Harvard Yard. Two of my favorite people in the whole dang world send thirteen ninety nine Canadian from the Stacy's Mom podcast. Happy one hundred K day! That's so Stacy's Mom just gave us thirteen ninety nine. I don't know how to rhyme, but I'm sure I'll do fine. There you go. Twenty dollars uh, from Ian Carmen. Congratulations! Keep up the good work. You're making a positive impact on live. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy and. Uh, Shit. Mm. You go to hell, Matt, maybe? You why G H Matt? G um I I don't know. You go hang. Um you gonna you go homie. That's what somebody in chat suggested. You go hard. Your going home is what. Oh, your gay says. homie. Yes, it's your gay homie. Oh, <laughs> it's it's from that dude that was yeah. like, "You're gay, homie." You're gay, homie. Oh uh, my god, I'm so. I love that, and I forgot it. The but, thing that I like yay, about it is Jimmy. that's that's one of the abbreviations for Yu-Gi-Oh. But famously, Matt doesn't play. I do. Yeah, I play adult games. Okay uh 99 from joshua mitchell congrats on 100k much love to you all even you jimmy thank wow. you 
Some people have no standards at all. <laughs> 1999 from LA Silver Surfers. What's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? Elvis Costello and the attractions. Well done. Hell yeah. Poor Claire, 999. No, my tongue tonight. 999 from Poor Claire. Happy belated birthday. I got cookies. Jimmy, Jimmy yourself extra Jimmy ishly tonight. I've been going to bed early. So if Jimmying yourself is going to bed, I will probably be doing that within moments of this stream's conclusion. We've been going to bed earlier and I've been getting up earlier. And part of it had to do with the fact that we went and did a reptile convention this past weekend uh, where we sold five snakes and uh, had a good time, but it was a lot of driving. Yeah. $10 I from Monkey at Typewriter. Hey guys, congratulations on 100K. Jimmy, you're a rock star producer and 100K people. Well, logically, they could be wrong, but I don't think they are about this probably great show go fuck yourself jimmy and you're gay homie <laughs> I, I hope this catches on i love this uh thank you but there are terrible channels with a hundred thousand subscribers do you know how many subscribers ben shapiro has uh oodles and cobs i bet he knows mark sebert says this channel rocks did, wait, did I read the last one? No, yeah. This channel rocks. Thanks for the endless entertainment and helping with my deconversion. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Nine ninety nine from Weed Spin. Congrats on one hundred k. I hope you guys get one hundred k more a hundred times. Uh, more a hundred more times. Thanks for all you guys do for people. That'd be a lot. Like we'd win the internet. Is that a lot? I think that's just 10 million. 10 million is a fucking lot. Oh, yeah. Who you know who's got more than 10 million subscribers? There, there's a few, but that's the, um, that is the diamond play button is 10 million subscribers. And then 100 million was whatever PewDiePie and that Indian music channel got. Maybe Ruby play button? I don't remember. Um, I don't know. I don't give a shit about the play button. I just want to reach more people. Well, I'm still getting you one. Sweet. Ten dollars from Frank. Congrats. Looking forward to the sometime show. Thanks to everyone for all the great shows. And go Jimmy yourself. I'm also looking forward to it. This I'm both looking forward to the start and the end of it. Truly. With equal passion. Uh very much so. 1999 from Vanessa Beasley. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matt, Jimmy, and other hosts and everyone involved in making this channel possible. The conversations made here are so valuable. So happy to see you had 100K. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you. Well played. And look, there's a snoot to boop. Oh, I'll boot to snoot. Nine ninety nine from Carmen Seni Hernandez Romero. And I want to tell you that my brain saw all those letters and yet still wanted to go, where in the world is Carmen <laughs> Seni Hernandez Romero? Hopefully Should everyone gets that. that reference. 999 from Johnny O. A proposition. Spaceballs was the best Mel Brooks movie. Thoughts? Um, no. History of the World, I like more. I think History of the World Part One. Yeah. Uh, but also Blazing Saddles. That's good. I mean, uh, it's it's problematic, but there's nothing that Mel Brooks has done that's not gonna be similarly problematic. But right. I would I would prefer Blazing Saddles and History of the World Part One over Spaceballs. History of the but Part One one wins for me just because of the these 15, 10 commandments. I don't know. That's one of my favorite. It's a joke that replays in my head a lot. Ooh, young Frankenstein. Frankenstein. $20 Australian from Gavin Pierce. First time I saw Jimmy was on The Thinking Atheist when he replied, no, Seth, you have a penis. You get your own universe. <laughs> I knew he was going to be a star. Congrats to everyone at the line. I believe you that I said it because it sounds like something I'd say, but I don't, I don't listen to myself. I drown myself out. Otherwise, I just go on and on. I think this is our last one. So if you're wanting to get a final super chat in on this, our, what? our big day with the, uh, what are we up to? Let me, uh, we are at 1,100, 100,129. Wow. Pretty great number there. Yeah. Did uh, we cross a hundred thousand super chats? No. 
No. Wow. And do you mean individually? You guys are weak. Or? I don't know why we did this. Did you want $100,000 or 100,000 individual super chats? 100,000 individual super chats. Because if they're all $10 or more, well, yeah, we true. did it. That's true. I just don't yeah, know if I could stay up that late. Uh, yeah, that would be a long time. $10, $10 from, from okay. Pibble Punk, the a -pistivist. I'm trying to quit smoking without divine intervention. Just as my Jordan Peterson. <laughs> Unrelated question for both. What's your favorite video game? Um, I'm going to cheat. So anybody who follows me on and watches me on Twitch knows that any question that is, what's your favorite X just annoys the crap out of me a lot because I don't tend to have favorites. But I will say my favorite puzzle game, computer game of all time is The Witness. Jonathan Blow is a genius. Braid was great. But The Witness is the greatest puzzle game ever made. Uh, it is brilliant in how it teaches you the game, how it twists everything. I don't know for sure if it's my all-time favorite game game, yeah. but it is easily my all-time favorite PC puzzle game. Uh, I used to say, and it probably is still true, that Skyrim is, to me, the greatest game that ever existed because I'll still pick it up and play it today, and, and I just love that game. Uh, I'm going to give a special side note, though, uh, a potential contender, uh, because the game I have played more than any other game actually isn't Skyrim. I should say more times, but there's a... Because you can beat the game, so it's not like Skyrim where you keep going after. Uh, so more times and beating the game is Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, uh, which I've played hundreds of times probably well, no dozens uh especially on emulators i've got it on my uh phone right now um but the reason why i'm excited and bringing it up is that they have remade it for the nintendo switch and that comes out in november uh with updated graphics and and a little bit of updated mechanics but staying very core to the original game and that is one of the things that i rarely am happy for a remake but i'm very happy for this remake uh so, Super Mario RPG, best Mario game by far, I think. Oh, yeah. Is this me or you? I don't remember. Go for it. 99 from Poofy74, circling back around. NanoCon is indeed Nashville, and look for 2024, hopefully. Hope to see you there. Here's another few dollars for a congrats on your 100K. Cheers. Thank you so much, Poofy. I hope... Well, you're probably talking to Matt, because Matt will be who's invited, but maybe yeah, I'll get invited and I'll go. Um, I'm not actually complaining about not getting invited places. People, I also am famous for not going places. <laughs> so be hard to be mad. $10 from Chris Carrillo or Carrillo. Uh, cheers to hundred K Matt. Excited to see you live at debate con. Jimmy best Ben Shapiro impression. Go fuck yourself. Jimmy. Also you're gay homie. So here's the thing about a Ben Shapiro impression. I can't do a good Ben Shapiro voice, but I've noticed a thing about him. And that is that he always talks through his eyes in through his eyebrows into the camera and he tilts his head down. And this is a very weird way to hold yourself. And I don't actually really understand how a person can talk like this and not feel ridiculous. But then there's Milo Yiannopoulos who somehow goes lower with it. He, like looks like he's looking at the ground and then lifts his eyes up. And Milo is fucking, I don't know if you've seen the crazy shit he's up to lately, but it's real dark i haven't heard anything about milo in years he is the new catholic poster boy for conversion therapy he travels the country speaking where oh, we'll have him on themselves. why conversion therapy you didn't did you pick up though earlier this year when he was uh yee's kanye west's uh basically campaign manager not not no. literally campaign manager because they didn't make it to the yeah he's He's quite the guy and believes everything the Catholic church has ever said was correct. That was a recent proclamation of him, of his. It's a shame the writer strikes not still going because the jokes write themselves. That's right. It's going to make my sometime show job real, real easy. Just sit All right, back some timer. That's right. Take us out. Goodbye. <laughs> no, I'll play the outro. <laughs> oh, I was out saying. We love you guys. Thanks so much. Thanks for another great Wendy and Wednesday and hitting 100,000. I'm not taking my clothes off.